is uh, the first order of business is to let everybody know that this is being recorded. All right. Um, and now we're going to open up uh, a hearing for an amendment by John Kowalski to modify driveway approval at 8 Kingsley Avenue, Northampton Map ID 32C153. Uh, Mr. Kowalski, do you have a little presentation for us? Um, just some background first, sorry, Mr. Kowalski, but the board, um, if you remember, we did meet on this prior and we uh, approved um, his application for most of the work except for his request to expand the driveway to 30 feet from 16. Um, so he's coming back on an amendment to that plan. All right. Okay, thank you. I'll start. Uh, I'll start sharing the screen if that's okay. Um. Yep. Hold on one second. I will uh, let you do that. Uh, let's see. Okay. All right. So now you can probably share the screen. Okay, so yeah, I think, uh, you know, most of you may remember I, I came with a proposal that had a 30 foot wide driveway and we talked about a couple, you know, different scenarios of, of that one here. And so I'll walk through kind of a couple different scenarios and then some of the, the feedback I've been receiving from the neighbors. So, um, you know, everything you'll see kind of below this line here is, is what I sent out to, to the neighbors, um, everyone kind of on the street and, and directly behind the house, all the abutters and ones negatively there. So kind of give them a, you know, quick update. Hey, we had the meeting back here. Um, you know, you know, we talked about, hey, did not want to do this 30 foot driveway. Um, you know, kind of went in through some items on, hey, the, you know, per the regulations need two parking spots per unit. Um, the issue is really the, the shallow depth of the lot. So it's really tough to get the parking within there with, with what I was trying to do. So it's really proposing the two garages really to, to cover the parking. Um, you know, do you understand that, uh, you know, the regulations I'll say don't require um, additional off street parking, uh, you know, talking to the neighbors that really was their, you know, really the only concern they brought up, right? It's kind of a street right near downtown. So it does sometimes get a, some parking from Roberto's there that takes up some other parking. So you know, ultimately that really was the, the neighbor's concern. So they're, they do appreciate looking at some options that could minimize that. And so, you know, although the, the driveway here wouldn't count for, I'll, I'll call it official parking to meet regulations, if there were guests or anything like that, they, you know, I think it would be fine for something like that for some short amount of time. Um, you know, so I'm not going after this 30 foot driveway anymore. Um, going to talk through a couple of um, scenarios of, of what we do here. So first is a alternate design one, um, which is kind of what a what the board you know basically approved, right? A 15 foot wide driveway um, with kind of how this is, and, and really the the you know in my opinion the, the difficulty here is really trying to come in and and make a turn to get into the the driveways. You know, it may look kind of bigger ish here but you know in reality you got to go in you got to turn to get in here um and then you know it really takes away from any kind of um any potential parking in here right no one can really park in here and get their any cars into the driveway and so you know say so kind of uh, some of the downsides on this one here um alternate design two um there was some talk about hey just uh you know for other projects um there have been, uh, you know, some, um, I guess, leniencies granted where, you know, only one parking space would be required. Um, you know, again, I think, you know, one, it, it kind of, uh, you know, writes over the regulations, right? So I think there is a, an approach to not need to skirt the regulations there. And then again, really only ends up with one parking space per unit. Um, again, the, the concern from the neighbors is, you know, the off street parking um, you know, I think more now than ever in the, in the current environment, you know, people are, um, you know, going to be working from home for a while, um, not necessarily looking for um, a lot of public transit at this time. So, 
um, you know, people themselves are going to be looking for additional parking as well. Um, moving down to uh, alternate design three. So this one is um, kind of an option of really just kind of flip-flopping things. This was another one that we talked about a bit with, hey, if there were two 15 foot wide driveways on this, you know, relatively wide lot, would that be acceptable? Um, and, you know, I, I guess, you know, it's really a, it's an option here where, hey, there are two driveways, but, you know, some of the downsides are, um, as the units were designed the other way, um, each unit kind of had a side yard to go to. Um, this one has the, you know, there do need to be two entrances uh, and exits here. So this really kind of brings the, the homes out to a, you know, narrow backyard here. Um, the alternate designs with the garages in the middle have the units uh, having an exit to the side here. So people do get their own little side yard. Um, so that's kind of, a, you know, the downside on that one. Um, alternate design four is, is what I'm proposing now. So it kind of, um, in a similar way, it takes two 15 foot driveways. Um, I've provided some details on what this granite um, curb would look like in here, you know, to maintain the two driveways. Um, kind of takes away the concerns of, uh, you know, say a, a long 30 foot wide driveway for something to walk across. Um, you know, want to note again, the there is a sidewalk on the other side of the street. So there's not necessarily a lot of walking over here. Um, no parking on this side of the street. So I'll say, uh, you know, a, you know, two driveways don't necessarily take away any parking um, from the street as well. Um, and then really from a, a safety perspective, you know, this ends up with um, nice straight shot into the driveways or I'm sorry, into the garages for everyone rather than trying to go in and, and turn your car um, same thing with backing out, right? Kind of uh, backing directly out of the driveway, um, you know, nice clear view um, and able to turn from, from that standpoint there. Um, you know, I did talk about this with the neighbors, um, you know, met out with them, kind of gave them all the opportunity to come out and spoken with all the, the direct abutters as well as some other neighbors on the street. Um, and, you know, have no have had no uh, negative comments from the neighbors with what I'm proposing to do. Um, if anything, they're, or in favor of it. Uh, so that's what I got. I guess I'll open okay. it up to questions. <clears throat> um, board members, maybe we could, I think we've been showing a, a, a variety of these and we've had an opportunity to read the <clears throat> comments from staff, Carolyn. Any questions from the board? This is just about the driveway. There's also a, <clears throat> a request to remove some pine trees, but we'll take that a little bit later as part of this amendment. Well then, everybody uh, <clears throat> remembers our previous meeting. Um, if folks are in favor of some of these other suggested options, speak up. I'm going to take that silence to kind of signify that uh, the planning board seems to be comfortable with keeping the driveway entrance at 15 feet and having the uh, the new tenants kind of accommodate their parking to that situation, whether it's in the driveway behind a parked car or having to negotiate a little bit as they turn into the driveway, or their guests finding parking out on Pleasant Street or on Kingsley Avenue or somewhere on the street. That Is it? I mean, not one of one of the the options was not. Uh, but like, is there room like to make it like twenty feet or something like that? I'm sorry, I couldn't quite hear you. Can, can you repeat that? Is there, I'm sorry, my my son is playing with something. Uh, making the driveway 
20 feet instead of the total. I mean, I, it's still 30 feet. So, I mean, is there is there room to is is there room to split hairs here? I'm I'm also asking Caroline, I guess, as well. Um. So I, you know, I think the um, issue is sure. I mean, you could you could allow a widening to 20 feet, but what, you know, um, I don't know what that would necessarily gain you. I think the applicant, and you know, he can speak to this, um, has um, prefers having um, four parking spaces per unit as opposed to the required two. Um, so I don't know that um, 20 feet might be that much better than 15 feet in terms of getting two in, um, you know, two additional parking spaces per unit. Yeah, and I guess just to be clear, you know, it's, you know, these aren't, I guess I wouldn't consider these, you know, real parking spaces, right? They don't necessarily meet the criteria for parking spaces because of the, the shallow lot the parking spaces to meet the regulations are the ones within the garage here you know this is really just trying to uh again accommodate you know any guests that may be visiting here that wouldn't take up the uh you know any more parking on the street for you know call it a, a quick visit or something like that um you know again i think you know this is kind of the the safest way you know to get cars in and out of the driveway and you know i, I guess i you know, I guess I'd encourage the board to, you know, frankly, listen to the neighbors, right, who, you know, are in favor of this as well. You know, I haven't heard any negative feedback, um, none that I've heard from, I don't believe you've received any either. Um, and again, you know, my, my talking with them is, you know, their, their concern is the parking on that street. Uh, uh, I personally, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. I personally, I'm just fine as it is, I do this number four, because I think in the last meeting, we are concerned about having this little island here, right? Is an island here? Something that- There is, yeah. 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 So yeah, that was one of the suggestion. I think that some of us, or I don't know, but uh, I, I just, I'm just, you know, that was the thing that we're talking about. And um, I think he took care of it. So I don't, I don't think that, and I walked there a couple of times just to make sure that, that you not uh, create more parking. Um, and it, it, to me, it does not make sense if you try to change the number four or come up with another alternative because we have talked about this quite you know, extensively. Um, I just, uh, my saying is that I go for this number four, the suggestion. Anyone else on the board? Yeah, I'm sorry, which one did you say? Yuri was interested in the, the uh, drawing that's on our screen right now, the one with the island in between two 15 feet driveways. <clears throat> I, you know, I've, I've been down to Kingsley Avenue quite a few times recently in the past month. Um, there, I, I don't go down there at one o'clock in the morning, but at other times, and there, there often does seem to be uh, plenty of extra parking on the street. Um, I think we live in a small city and parking is always going to be somewhat of an issue. Um, but on Pleasant Street, there's more, there's ample spots. I, I think tenants have to kind of configure their parking or perhaps one reason they're moving into town we're hoping is because they're not, they don't have a car. Um, I know we're, we're not mandating that. So I, I, I think we're going in the wrong direction if we start providing more space on lots for more cars to park, um, making it easier for them. Um, but that's not just my perspective at this time. Yeah, so, I, I guess I'd just like to know, you know, it's, 
it's a little bit different now in the current environment, right? You know, six months ago, right? You know, Roberto's and everyone else was a lot busier down there and it, it was a, a bit more of a parking concern. And I think that is, you know, historically what the neighbors have seen, that's why they're, you know, they're, they're in favor of not taking up any parking on the, on the street there. Just, just want to note that. Marissa? I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm, I'm just concerned. We, we asked, um, you know, we asked for, we denied the, you know, an expansion of the 15 foot cutout and this just gives us two, you know? Um, and I, I, I don't see how this addresses the thing that we sent back. I can appreciate that the neighbors uh, take, you know, don't have a concern with it, but, and also, for the sake of creating parking spots that are not really parking spots, um, you know, by, you know, by your, by your own description, I, I, I'm, I mean, I don't, I don't think this is, you know, we, I feel like this is what we denied in the first place um, with, but with a little granite, you know, curb thing. Um, yeah, I felt like I was trying to uh, to address the concern with that with by, by adding the granite. Okay. Yeah. I understand what you're what you're trying to say. Thank you. Uh, but I, but I think that was the suggestion to put a little island, right? Was discussed back then. And to me, my understanding is that you guys want to, you know, they, generally, um, your fellows want to have a, a break on these 20, 30 feet, right, or forty feet. Uh, parking driveway, and uh, I think he came out with that. So um, I just don't don't see how, why, you know, keep it. Well, I mean, I just don't see how the little granite thing. I mean, because the, the question is, is you know, pedestrian, you know, uh, safety across. And it seems to me like it does two things. One is it reduces the amount of street parking available. Um, street uh, parking is not available on that side of the street. Okay, but then the other thing is, is it's not clear to me that this little granite cutout uh, thing is, I mean, in theory, right? The thing is, is like a, a pedestrian could stop in between and, you know, if, if there was any clear, and I understand this is not a high traffic area. This isn't like people are gonna be like coming and going. I just- Yeah, uh, yeah there's a sidewalk on the other side of the street. Yeah. I, well, I, I mean, people coming and going on the car, uh, in cars. Um, but the other thing too is it's, it's um, I did, you know, I, I appreciate it. I, and I, I, I think I recall the suggestion being made, um, that this might be one way of dealing with it. Um, I, I left, I had, my thinking was, is a, a single 15 foot cutout would, would be better. I have a question about your design too. So under that, you're you're making small a smaller unit because I, I presume upstairs is not cantilevering out to keep it bigger. The, the second floor would also shrink. Is this something you're actually proposing that you would go forward with? Um, I, I would not go forward with this, right? So this this frankly would take it from a, uh, a three why, bedroom why, okay. each so, side okay. to a two unit bedroom on or two bedroom unit on each mm -hmm. side. You know, so I'll say with the you know, looking at the overall master plan, right, to get more, yeah. more housing, more units, more people downtown, frankly. Um, You're playing a dangerous game showing an alternative that you won't go forward with. <laughs> um, I have to say, with regard to what Marissa just said, I mean, to us, I think you said, we've said over and over again, these, these spaces in front of the driveway are not spaces. So alternate one and alternate four provide the exact same capacity for guest parking by the letter of the law. Obviously people park wherever, you know, people park on grass too, right? But um, it just seems to me all like design one fulfills pretty much everything from you need it to with one driveway. So there you go. Yeah, I, I guess I, I would I would argue that this is actually a um, not as safe design as the other one, right? This is trying to navigate out of a driveway and have to turn a little bit to get out as opposed to a, a straight shot getting yeah, out. Everybody has to turn to get out of the driveway. That's that's something that we, we all live with. 
Yeah, I, I guess I would say though that, you know, one of the items that was brought up last time was the concern of a, of a wider driveway, maybe, you know, someone may be going into it a little faster, um, which I thought the, the two 15 foots may, may address that. Um, Doesn't, one is a one foot, is, is one 15 footer. So it's the same, right? I mean. Yeah, I, I, again, I, I guess my, my point of uh, concerns of getting in and out of the driveway safely, I think were, were noted previously. And so, um, again, that's why I was thinking that this would be a, a safer way with a straight shot in and out. Do you think uh, alternate one is something you would move forward with if it was approved? If alternate two was not something you would go forward with, is yep, alternate one something you would go forward yep. with? Yeah, I guess I'd, I guess I'd have to move forward with that. <laughs> I don't know who's talking here, but okay. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Kowalski, I appreciate the work you put into this, um, but I think we do have these kind of stipulations, these guidelines around driveway and occupancy um, for certain reasons that have served the city well for a period of time and. Uh, and regardless of the, there's not a, a strong case to be made about having two driveways or having a 30 foot driveway at this point. Um, I think as uh, David mentioned, we all have to kind of negotiate um, in a whether it's residential or city kind of coming and going from driveways and parking spaces. And I think um, the, uh, the, the neighbors, the abutters have put up with other traffic there from from the restaurants, from the folks who lived in that building beforehand, uh, maybe because it's been uh, vacant for a while, they've come to enjoy not having a three or four extra cars on the street. Um, but I, I think I'm hearing that the board probably wants to stay with the 115 foot driveway and give you some flexibility if you want to go forward with um, your alternate plan number one there. Okay, um, you know, this is, a, I'm not quite sure procedurally how to do this, whether we vote on this um, request as part of the amendment or we now we turn to the, uh, the pine trees and walk through that and then take them both up at the same time with one most. And Carolyn, any suggestions? Yeah, I think you should um, discuss the tree removal um, um, on that side, and then then um, open up for public comment and determine um, you know the whole um, application in front of you. So trees as well as the modification of that curb cut. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Kowalski, if we could switch over to the trees, I think that's what on the east side, the large white pine trees. Um, Correct. Um, so now have um, uh, the, the neighbor who owns the home on, on this side of the house. Um, again, this is the street. This is looking at the front of the house. Um, normally lives in uh, Arizona. She's, uh, she's now come, come back now for a bit for the summer. Um, and now has, you know, seen kind of what's going on over here. Um, and she would prefer that these trees be removed. Um, and so I'm proposing that the trees be removed. And those trees are on private property, so they don't come under the kind of the purview of the city or the tree warden. The uh, homeowner can do anything he or she wants with those trees at this point. I, I guess. Plan? Sorry, oh. I was just going to clarify if the applicant's going to, I mean, it's hard to know exactly where the trees are um, relative to the property line, but if, as part of this project, the applicant is taking the trees down, um, then that would trigger this uh, tree replacement requirement for the one 20 inch pine tree. Um, and, but the others don't hit that threshold. So um, there would be the calculation related to that. You've been through that calculation, Mr. Kowalski, with staff? 
Can you understand about the replacement value? Uh, Carolyn has explained it to me, yes. Can you Is that in play even if it's not on his property? Um, so as part of the application, the permit condition said that he had to protect those trees during construction because there's going to be a lot of psychic difference here. So um, I've, given the proximity of these trees, I would say, yes, it falls under the jurisdiction of the permit because of, um, you know, the issues related to um, earth removal that would otherwise potentially impact these trees. I also think it's in his best interest too, if he's going to put in a new building there, given the, uh, the, the nature of these kind of white pine trees put together, there may be some hazard in the future. And are we planning any additional plantings there as a buffer for the neighbor or we're just paying into the tree fund? Uh, at this point, just plan on going into the tree fund. Um... I've talked with my neighbors about putting a, a fence around it. Um, we've had discussions about that. The board could also, because it's site plan review, require that um, some planting go in um, its place. Um, it's going to be a significant change to the um, canopy there with all of those pine trees coming down. Um, and so um, I certainly would recommend that at least one tree be planted on site at the end of the construction um, to allow that to uh, mature with sort of after post-construction, um, which, you know, addresses the safety concerns of those existing older pine trees as being staying in place during construction. Okay, would you be amenable to that, Mr. Kowalski? I would prefer to just put into the tree fund. So, Carolyn's point is good. We're concerned about the tree canopy, especially downtown, where we certainly don't have as many trees. We want to, there's no real tree belt there that I think the city has an easement on that we're going to plant trees on. So, um, it makes sense, I think, for the neighborhood, for the city, and for even the residents to have um, a tree there or some shade rather than just a, uh, a fence. Um, so I yeah, I agree that may be the case. I, uh, I just, uh, at this point, not knowing what it's going to look like um, completely done, my preference would be to put it into the, into the tree fund. And then, you know, the town at that point has obviously flexibility to, to do whatever it likes with it. Right, but not flexibility to put it on your private property if you don't want it there. I mean, the trees are not on his property now. We're talking about the neighbor's tree and they said that they want to get rid of, I mean, he tells us that they said they want to get rid of them. Yeah, correct. I have a, uh, geez, I don't know if I printed it out. Um, I do have something that uh, the neighbor signed kind of showing that she is uh, uh, okay with it. Um, geez, I can't remember if I scanned it into the computer or not. Um, I, I could obviously provide that. So, but David, normally I think even though they are on the neighbor's property, they, they're coming down because of this construction project. Um, and I think we do want to look at the replacement. So I guess just to clarify, Charlene has signed a version of this. I don't have the uh, the, um, the signed copy scanned to my, into my computer, but th this is what she has, has signed. I, I hear what you're saying, George. I just, I, I mean, it's a very tight site. I guess I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trying to, I hadn't figured out exactly. I mean, it would suck to uh, compromise, you know, a unit of housing because of some, you know, theoretical tree. But yeah. I'm open to it. 
if I look at this, during this point, doesn't the applicant have the choice? Well, uh, it is yes. a special. Yeah, the, the applicant does have a choice um, whether to pay into the fund or plant on site. There's some other there's other vegetation that's coming off the site. So the planning board does have a different type of jurisdiction to um, require planting if it desires. But it's certainly not mandated by the zoning. But um, and yes, the applicant has a choice about whether to pay in completely or plant on site. So if the applicant determines that there's not room on site, you know that that is the option to pay. Yeah, I mean, I would say that the that the to re, to require it is it, this isn't the most compelling location for it. Um, it's not like it's a denuded area, um, I you know, and and we have a neighbor who is not, you know, seems to be in agreement. Um, so, the other thing too is it doesn't seem very clear to me that any. Any tree that got planted would, you know, really benefit sort of the street canopy at all. It doesn't look to me like there's on the site um, just a great amount of room for, for a, a, a planning to be that. Um, so yeah, that that is my concern with it. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know that this is the most compelling case to make the to require it. All right, and, and I certainly don't want to stay on this for too long, but we have in the past six to eight months been looking at a lot of applications, different trees coming down, talking about the inventory of trees, not only what it does for carbon sequestration, excuse me, but also what it provides for wildlife or things kind of in there. And this is a, a, an urban area. Those are a lot of pine trees that provide all kinds of benefits. Um, at this point uh, to the wildlife and to the environment. So by taking down six, eight, you know, a, a big row of them and not asking for at least one tree that might have a chance to grow to maturity, I think we're missing an opportunity. Um, that being said, I'm not gonna hold up the removal of the pine trees um, for lack of, um, uh, the promise of planting a new sage tree in that vicinity. All right, any other comments from the board before we open it up to the public? Let's go there then. Is there anybody in the Zoom room who would like to speak uh, related to this um, amendment by Mr. Kowalski, either for or against at this point? Please raise your hand electronically or wave and John, could you um, drop down or Carolyn that the presentation for the time being? So we have uh, the gallery view. Yep. yep, I'm taking it down, I think. Um, okay. Gee. <clears throat> okay, we're open for a public comment. Number no. Well, hearing none, we'll move on. Uh, if we have enough um, information, we can have a motion to close the public comment, or if folks need to ask uh, the applicant more questions, we can keep it open for a while. All right, how about a motion to close the public comment? And this is roll call. Thank you, Yuri. <laughs> I second that. Yuri and Marissa seconded. Um, I'll, <clears throat> I'll do the roll call from my screen here. This time there's, or there's a motion to close the public portion of the hearing. Uh, David? Yeah. 
All right, Stan. Just You're muted. Close. You're muted, Sam. So, which one are you voting on right now? The close comment. Yes, yeah, close. Yes. All right, Yuri. Yes. Okay, Marissa. Yes. Marissa. Yes. And Alan. Yes. All right, and the chair also votes in favor. Okay, go. We have two suggested amendments by the uh, applicant, one easier than the other. Um, there were a couple of conditions that the staff noted recommended. Or maybe not. Would anyone like to make a motion? And we're going to combine both the tree and the driveway in one motion. Uh, I would move that we uh, uh, how, how should I put this? So uh, for um, uh, the the site plan to amend greater than the 15 foot wide uh, curb cut, I would I would move that we um, accept uh, the petitioners, is it petitioners? Sorry, uh, option uh, two with the single 15 foot uh, curb cut and um, allow the, the, the trees, um, the removal of the pine trees in the back and allow the, the um, him to pay into the, without requiring a replacement um, to pay into the, the tree fund. Um, as to site on 8 Kingsley Avenue, permit file 32C-153. Did I get Thank that you. remotely right? <laughs> that was very good. Carolyn, <laughs> can the minutes reflect that okay? Well, let me just, I just want to make sure I understand. So um, you're moving to um, um, essentially um, approve the tree removal component but maintain the previously approved um, permit condition of keeping the driveway access at 60 feet. So not yeah, so that's original permit. That, yeah, that's clear. Yes, that's correct. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, any last discussion on the motion? Did someone second it? I didn't get that one, sorry. Second, second. Okay. There. There's no discussion. We'll move through the roll, roll call of a vote again. All right. So the motion's been made and seconded. Uh, uh, all those in favor, David. Yep. All right. Sam. Aye. Yuri. No. Nope. Nope. Okay. Marissa. Yes. Melissa. Yes. Alan. Yes. And the chair votes yes. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six eyes and one nay. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Kowalski, um, for trying to create a, a, a which I'm sure will be a good project down in that part of uh, Pleasant Street. Thank you for your consideration. Before we go on to the next um, item, can I just ask, did, did anyone else have trouble joining the Zoom meeting? I, I, it kept saying that the meeting ID number was invalid. I entered it 10 times. Yes, George had a difficulty when he was trying to come back in, but the first time he didn't have an issue. Everyone else was able to use, I was using the ID on the meeting agenda. 
and it continued continuously said invalid number. I, I used that myself and I got it the first time, first try, so I didn't have a problem myself. That's crazy. I don't know. Huh. Weird. Uh, yeah. Tried to keep okay. me up. You're disenfranchised. That's it, I guess. Yeah. We're glad you finally made it, Alan. Thanks for coming in. If it happens again, though, I'm really going to wonder. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why don't we move on to our second uh, agenda item, which is a uh, at 715, we'll open a special permit with site plan approval by Associated Builders Inc. for Cousins Investment LLC to create Volvo Auto Sale at 32 and 48 Damon Road, Northampton, map IDs 18D, 34, and 35. I think our applicant and the representatives are here, so. I am. I'm Kim Maslowick from Associated Builders, and I'll be presenting tonight on behalf of Cousins Investments. Um, Carla and Tommy Kazenzi, who are actually the owners, are on here too as well, um, if we need them to jump in. So I will um, jump right in. Um, they are here tonight seeking a special permit for the use associated um, with bringing Volvo to 48 Damon Road. Um, it's an automobile dealership, very similar to the other two that they own on King Street. And uh, actually they previously ran Northampton Volkswagen out of that, uh, out of 48 Damon Road um, until we built a new facility on King Street. So it'll be kind of going back to a very similar use. Vomax um, actually occupied that facility as a tenant in between Volkswagen and um, they're looking to bring Volvo here from their South Deerfield um, address right now. So that will be good to occupy a vacant facility. Um, I'm gonna call up the aerial here and you can just see this where I have my cursor is 48 Damon Road. So that's a vacant building yeah. next to it. I can see it. You need to hit share screen and then oh, um, okay. navigate over. Can you come back? I got it. I think I have it. Can there you see you go. it? Got it's it? Coming up. <laughs> All yeah. right, this is my first Zoom public hearing. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so where my cursor is right here is um, the vacant facility, 48 Damon Road. This is Damon Road on, on the bottom here. 91 goes diagonal. The railroad is on the left side. Um, K Lane is right here on the left side as well. Dunkin' Donuts is across the street, the industrial park. Um, so, you can see it's fully developed site. There's two driveway entrances, one at this intersection, and there's another one over here on the side. Um, and really, step one of this is um, there's no proposed, you know, interior exterior renovations really to speak of with this project right now. Carla is just trying to maintain her dealership rights, and in order to do that, she needs to move in here and start, um, you know, operating out of this facility. And not to convolute what we're here for, but hopefully the road, we will be um, coming back in because she needs, in order to maintain this dealership, right, she will have to have a fully functional um, facility that meets the Volvo manufacturing standards, which will require, you know, exterior facade upgrades to an existing building and or a new building here. So um, as far as that direction, it's not 100% definitive at this time, but right now, you know, she just wants to get, get back in there and get operating. So, um, so although there's really not much going on inside the building, we are proposing several site improvements to this, uh, just to dress it up and to try and bring it into conformance with the landscaping setbacks um, for zoning. So if we go to, this is our proposed site plan, but what I did here is I actually, took a Google map that showed when it was Volkswagen so that you can see she's really going to be trying to do um, the car parking layout and everything will be very similar as to what it was at that time. 
This is actually a lower volume dealership than Volkswagen was, so there'll be a little bit less, um, you know, inventory parking. There's 80 and 25 spaces for the employees, customers, and service. Um, but some of these improvements that we're making on here, actually, let me take a step back. The road project that you probably are all familiar with, um, Mass DOT is doing road work on this Damon Road. And I did with DPW, and um, this was yesterday. So they let me know that the contract was awarded for that project, and it hopefully will be starting this fall, and hopefully will be completed in fall of 2022. So if you look at this, um, the existing road edge is out here, and they're doing a taking on their pro on the um, properties that we're looking at here. So it's the largest taking is on the left hand side of the screen here and then it kind of tapers back, but they're adding sidewalks um, and widening the road there and it kind of goes all the way along Damon Road. So um, in addition to that, after that is done and they come in and they do, you know, the roadway widening, the sidewalks, then we would have a 10 foot minimum landscape buffer here. So on the very left edge, it's 10 feet. And by the time you get over to the driveway entrance, it's like 17 feet. And then it goes back to 10 feet for the rest of the frontage here. Um, and we provided some trees, street trees, 30 feet on center. We had little leaf lindens. Um, this driveway also, I just wanna note that we would be requesting a 30 foot wide driveway instead of 24 so that car carriers can come on site and do their turning movements on the site. Um, and that's something that wasn't reflected on the mass DOT plans. And I've spoken with DPW and we are, um, you know, they said it has to be a coordination, a field change coordination with mass DOT. So we will work on that if and when they get, get going on this. Um, in front of the building, we are actually put, providing sidewalks, not only for the customers, but then you're gonna have the mass DOT street sidewalks. And then we have a connection point here with some bike racks um, as well. So you'll have that connectivity there and then we'll have additional landscaping in here. Um, and this right here is that other uh, exit and entrance driveway. And we are proposing to close that just to really um, you know, eliminate some of that congestion and safety issues out in the street by having this driveway so close to the signalized intersection, it just creates confusion. So um, we're gonna stick with the one shared driveway here at the signalized inter intersection, which will be um, significantly safer and hopefully improve the, the traffic flow there. So um, really that that is it in a nutshell, it's, um, very sim, you know, very similar to how they were operating before for Volkswagen, and we'll have these additional improvements. Um, the, I think you know we were working, talking with Carolyn about how to address the timeline because it doesn't really make sense to do this work right now and then have Mass DOT rip it all up and then do it again later. Um, so we were hoping that we could work with the board so that after the roadway work is complete you know, that the Kazenzis would have about a year to finish these site improvements. Um, so that is where we are at. And uh, operational, there's like 15 employees and Carla can speak to this if she wants, but I, I had uh, 15 employees and then pretty much normal business hours, like it's eight to um, I think seven, it depends on service and sales or different hours, Monday through Friday, and then some on Saturday just sales on Saturday and then nothing on Sunday. Um, and that's that's what they're thinking. Hopefully we can work together. We do have some temporary barricades on here just to, um, in the interim of time, while we're waiting for the, for the roadway work to be done, just to address some of the big concerns, which is closing this driveway on the right-hand side here. We're putting up Jersey barriers and then to close off the paved area in front of the building to make sure there's no display cars and it's really just for pedestrian use. Um, and actually Carla ordered some really nice 42 inch flower pots to, to close that off, um, but do it in a nice, a nice way. 
um, in, in the areas on these each side of the building corners here so that people can walk through here and and uh, but you're not going to have the cars driving through there and or display cars. Thank you very much. Thank you. Questions and good job on your first Zoom presentation. <laughs> any any comments, questions from the board members? So I, I guess I have a quick question for Carolyn. So are are we accepting a planting plan at this point in time or do you really just showing up the conceptual plan and later on we'll see the real the finalized plan two years from now um so you know it's a good question i did go back and forth with um uh kim Mazowick about how to address um the issue of this mass dot project um and so they showed you know we talked about having the applicant put up a bond to say okay at x time we'll, we'll do this um, planting and and sidewalk implementation and and um, lighting and curb closure um but at the end of the day since there is potential that even the buildings might change and renovations to the buildings might happen or something completely different to the site might happen um i discussed with the applicant which is why it's in my staff recommendation that the uh, board grant a two-year permit um, for the applicant and um, given the mass dot construction timeline that's going to be a two-year window you know starting this fall but not ending for two years um, that sort of coincides with a two-year permit and then at that time um, uh, the applicant could reapply for a new permit and then it would be much more clear at that time what the um, potentially what the end plan is for the reuse of the site and then DOT would be done with the project. Um, so I guess that's a long way of saying um, the landscaping is definitely not going to go in before DOT finishes the project. That's at least two years. Um, and given that in that two-year window, the concepts for how the Bobble dealership is going to be operational here may change anyway. So uh, my recommendation, and I think the applicant is agreeable to this, that they get a two-year permit, but that mandates them to come back if they want to continue to operate. They need to come back and renew their permit, and then the board will see um, uh, a landscape plan, which presumably be very similar to what you're seeing here, um, but it may be entirely different if they have a different plan for building renovations or new structures that might go on the property. Okay, thanks. Because as I look up and down the other uh, <clears throat> automobile distributors on King Street, certainly some of our biggest concerns are with some of the treescape, the tree planting. So I think two years from now we'll probably test. We'll probably be looking at that a lot more closely. I think. Um, what is there any storm water permitting done through the DPW given? Uh, it's not a change of use or right there's no site work so that's not going to trigger a separate stormwater permit um they're really not changing any uh, there's no site changes really at this point the only changes that we know that are coming down <laughs> are what's going to happen with that in that um dot taking area so um nothing really more than that on the private property side so um there because there's no change proposed on the site at this time then there's no change in the stormwater um, evaluation really we're just benefiting that because we're cutting out paving and putting in lawn landscaped areas so you're reducing runoff anyway right I, uh, I spoke with Carolyn a little bit offline because I noticed in the application there wasn't a, uh, a lighting plan either 
which usually we spend some time with. And they explain that, um, again, a lot of the lighting for this large lot is on poles that are in the DOT right of way. So they'll be coming down during construction. Um, and also the Volvo um, has certain requirements for franchise owners about specific lighting to their building. So I think we'll be seeing a lighting plan in two years when they come back with the site plan uh, along with the, uh, the planting plan. I understand that correctly. Correct. That that's 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 right on. You know, and Carolyn and I had gone back and forth about that, and um, you know, we it's it's hard. This is really like I said, it's it's phase one, and hopefully within two years we're back in with a whole new set of plans for you, really with details. You know, a fully detailed site plan. Um, you know, with either like I said, either the renovations for the facades and and whatnot or demolishing buildings new buildings we're not 100 percent sure yet but hopefully that will all be you know worked out by that time as for now we know you know that we need to at least um do some of these temporary measures to address um some of the traffic flow as it is and i think that will be an improvement and then um you know, if, if nothing has changed in two years and we, we do this, it's still an improvement, but hopefully we will be back and business, you know, picks back up and and they are able to do a new dealership. I, I think this is a good, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, I, I think this is a, 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 good, a good way to structure it, um, you know, to, to make it temporary. I think it, it puts some immediate improvements in place and allows the the property owner to 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 use the to use the lot um, as it you know basically as it currently sits, but with some improvements until a, a further development plan can be put in place. So I think I think it's a I think I drive by there all the time. It's it's it'll it'll be better than it is now. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to note that the only issue about um, from DPW really as it relates to sort of the temporary permit is that they just want to make sure that there are adequate oil and water separators for the in the garage bays for service. So um, that, yeah, that will come forward during building permit review. So that doesn't necessarily have to be part of the planning board um, review, but that was sort of the only comment as it relates to um, you know, um, utility issues. There is an existing MDC gas trap on site. Okay. It's functional and, yep. So Carolyn, um, we are in the process of probably um, approving both a site plan, uh, a special permit and a site plan to right. end two years from now. Would the this, would this special permit also need to be applied for again two years from now, or will that just carry over and they will do a amended site plan? I'm just trying to think of if I'm on the board two years from now, I might be scratching my head, so. <laughs> um, I think and because it's a special permit with site plan, they're sort of they're tied together, that I would say the entire permit um, should be valid um, coterminously, so it's it's at the same time, so it expires together as one package, and then they reapply for that special permit. Thank you. Any other questions from the board members before we open it up to the public? All right, hearing none. Is there anyone here in the Zoom meeting who would like to speak in favor or against the application? Nobody's out there, Carolyn, in the waiting room. I didn't see anybody, but I'll double check. Uh, no. All right. Close public comment. Second. Motion has been made to close the public comment and seconded. Any discussion? Okay, we'll go through that roll call vote. Could we go back to the gallery screen for a minute? Yep. All right, thank you.
So then, uh, motion I a in favor of opposed to opposing the public comment. David? Thumbs up. Okay. Sam? Yep. Yep. Yuri? Yep. Thank you. Marissa? Yes. Thank you. Melissa Fowler? Yes. And Alan? Okay. Thank you. And George, too. All right. So unanimous. So it, it appears to me the only thing the board really has to discuss at this point, um, whether or not it's wise to have this temporary permit, we seem to be in favor of, but also there's a waiver for the uh, main entrance to go from 24 feet to 30 feet, so that trucks can access that. I guess that would be one of our conditions that we would put on the permit. Or you, or you would grant the, um, the approval for 30 feet. It, it seems like uh, there's already a, a stoplight facing that driveway. It seems like a good place to have 30 feet. If that. it's not 30 feet, it's going to get destroyed by the trucks pretty quickly. So. Okay. Well, if there are no other questions for the applicant, uh, let me just check to see what's the other. And we're also, one of the conditions we're approving the closing of that entrance closest to 91, and they'll do something uh, to beautify Damon Road there before the DOT construction happens. Um, and there's another comment that trees along the frontage west of the building shall be planted below the retaining wall. But that's later on upon the completion of the project, right, Carolyn? Right. So I don't know that that's really, um, I mean, that, I think that's sort of a good placeholder, but they wouldn't be planting that anyway. Um, before the expiration of the permit because of the timing of that DOT project. So, um, I, you know, I don't think you need to create a condition that, um, for that because they would automatically need to come back in and then show the full um, extent of that landscaping. And they have those comments now in, um, in their pocket so they can present that um, when the time comes. And I guess you work with the applicant and your knowledge of DOT construction methods to figure that this date of September 15th, 2022 should work, right? Okay. So our, I guess our, our, uh, our motion will include that date in it. Any other questions from the board? No? One last quick question. The, the KLA in operation, are they, are they then our tenants of the Cousins LLC? They are currently tenants, yep. yep. And they're not here today to speak in favor or against, but I guess they're aware of everything that's happening and how their driveway will, their lot will become more populated, okay. Great. Is there a motion then? Uh, okay, motion to approve the permit with the site plan by Associates Builders Inc. of Cursing, Cousins, Cousins Investments LLC to create Volvo out sale at 32 and 48 Damon Road, Northampton, MEP IDS. 18D-34, 35, with the mentioned conditions. Okay, with, if, if I may, Yuri, is the approval of the 30-foot driveway and the closing of that second entrance closes by 91. That's correct. And that it's a temporary permit to end on September 19, 2022. <clears throat> is there a second? Second. Thank you, Melissa. Any more discussion? All right. 
Well then, let's move on to this roll call. Um, the motion's been made and seconded. Um, all those in favor, please, or against, uh, we'll start back with you again, David. Yep. Okay. Sam? Yes. Julie? Yes. Okay, and Marissa? Yes. And Melissa? Yes. Alan? Yes. And George? Yes. All right, so it's unanimous. Without having had the consent to say one word, that works out pretty well. For well, thank you okay. for your time. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Well, we're going from one end of David Road to the other. This is ironic or coincidence. So, I'll, I'll have um, we'll, during construction. <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought it was going to be a big fruit stand at the other end, but what do I know? All right, 8 o'clock, uh, we're going to open a special permit for more than one curb cut, site plan for more than six new parking spaces, and associated site development at 391, 393 Damon Road, Northampton. Map by D 25A, 0, 13, and 15. And the applicant here to walk through a little presentation for us. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Yes, Mr. Chairman. I'm Rob Levesque from R. Levesque Associates. Also with me on the Zoom is Chris Farley um, in the black shirt. Uh, there are some of the proponents, I believe Ryan Ferreter, uh, Ted Madrew. Uh, Nick Yee, and I believe Mark Cutting is also on the line. Um, and actually another Mr. Ferreter as well, I believe. So uh, so thank you for your time. Uh, we, if, if it pleases the board, what we'd like to do is share our screen. Hearing no objection. Okay, with any luck, you folks are looking at my, my, um, my plan. Good. Great. Okay. Yeah. All right. Here we go. So I'll start with the existing conditions. So subject property is the old fish restaurant, which is located approximately right here. There's also a number of other businesses operated here. There's a greenhouse um, that uh, exists right here. And then there's another building that's used for moving and self storage, really not used for that. It's more of a billboard, but it's an office and a sign for the, uh, for the tenant. Um, we have the bike trail that exists uh, to the, we'll call that to the north. Uh, and then just behind the building, there's an existing um, bike trail that's just recently been reconfigured. And as you're aware, there's a lot of work on Bridge Street and Damon Road here with the new uh, rotary uh, and whatnot. We have a little bit of wetland not too far off of our site with a 50 foot and a 100 foot buffer shown. Uh, we had a request for determination before the Com uh, Conservation Commission earlier this evening. I expect that that went well because essentially what we're doing, I haven't heard that, but I, uh, essentially what we're doing in this area is just returning it to grass at this point. Um, any questions on the existing conditions or where we're found? Okay, hearing none, I will move to our layout. I'm sorry, I'll go through the demo first real quick. So if everyone can see the screen, um, the greenhouse is going to be removed. Um, there's a, some concrete pads and some other retaining walls and landscape features that will be removed. Uh, there's a few trees out front, these boxes out here that will be protected. Uh, there is an existing tree to be removed right here where that X is. Uh, generally, the Fishhook restaurant is going to remain and be reused, that structure, uh, as well as the building um, to, uh, closer to Route 9. Um, this is, again, the, the moving and self-storage building. So those will both remain. So the proposal, as mentioned, is to reuse the um, existing building for a, a retail marijuana. In general, there's some there's a mar I'm sorry, marijuana dispensary. Um, there is uh, a few little details that I'm sure Chris will get through um, when I finish up with kind of the site plan details. But Chris has um, a whole set of drawings 
and I can actually share the elevations and the floor plans that Chris has provided. I can be Vanna White for him when he gets to uh, kind of gets to the speaking portion. So, uh, but with regard to the site, we're planning on again pulling pulling our site back to just this area here. Um, we've established based on the programming uh, of, the, of the user um, and their their past experience that 38 parking spaces uh, is logical and would make sense. We're generally looking at two curb cuts. Uh, the first being a 24 foot wide curb cut coming in off of Damon in this location uh, within the general vicinity of our existing curb cut, which is right about here. Uh, we are reducing that down to 24 feet wide. Um, we also have another curb cut here. Um, earlier, uh, earlier today, and I think um, we've been discussing with Carolyn this past week, the ch a little bit of a change to this little, uh, to this radius here on this side of the, the uh, exit. So we've, re we've necked this down a little bit and we've added on to that. So I'll show you that in a few moments. Um, but the rest of this drive aisle would be 22 feet here to get out of the parking, uh, necking down to 16. And I believe we necked it down to 14 on the way out. As mentioned, this existing moving building will remain. There is right now a bunch of gravel around the property that they kind of use to get around the site. We thought that that would be best to try to reduce that. So we're basically reducing the gravel around uh, this location here. We're going to loam and seed that, clean that up so that gets maintained. And then the gravel area would remain just only where you see this dashed, these dashed lines. So just the three little spaces this is here just to provide access to this building that gets very minimal use. The majority of the um, folks we anticipate will be parking for the cannabis facility here uh, will be in this lot. We have four spaces out front, two handicap accessible spaces, as well as a refuse area out the side of the building here, some striping, another loading, little loading area here, um, and then again, a total of 38 spaces. The, the site as it exists is all paved, um, or not all paved, I should say a portion of the site is paved, but we will be actually reducing the pavement and pervious surfaces overall on site by about 1400 square feet. That reduction will allow us to handle our stormwater in the existing drainage that's out there. Uh, we're under 43,560, so I don't trigger a stormwater permit uh, under the city ordinance, but we are cognizant of the need and the concern for making sure stormwater is handled, handled properly. Right now what happens is there's a, there's a catch basin, two catch basins on site. They collect water from the existing parking lot. We'd anticipate that those would remain. Um, those could be hooded if that was desired by the, um, the, the DPW and engineering department uh, to make sure that total suspended solids are kept in the structures and that the sumps can collect the total suspended solids. Um, but generally speaking, the drainage and the grading on site is very minimal. We anticipate we'll be upgrading the parking lot um, by milling and topping um, and shimming as needed. There'll be new sidewalks and concrete areas created around the building, um, around the main building. Uh, but generally speaking, the rest of the site will be loamed and seeded. Um, and then we have a pretty extensive landscape plan that I'll show you on the next sheet. Are there any questions on, on the grading? Generally speaking, I can tell you that it's, um, just adjustments for accessibility, you know, 521 CMR, uh, being compliant with architectural access board, those types of um, basic, but the grades are generally going to be what you would see out there. Any questions on that? None? You guys can hear me, right? Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, this is the landscape plan. Um, we had submitted a kind of a, a lesser landscape plan, I will call it. Um, and uh, based on the response back from the planning department, we have uh, further enhanced that plan. Uh, we provide about, I think it's about 204 plants in total throughout the site, both trees and shrubs. Um, we have a pretty detailed schedule. I won't go through every little one, but uh, just to give you an idea of what we're planting, uh, Japanese maple, river birch, American smoke tree, London plane tree, Japanese alcova, or butterfly bush, smooth hydrangea, inkberry, creeping juniper, switchgrass, rhododendron, and arborvitae. So pretty good variety. Um, and they have been, uh, those plants and shrubs have been kind of uh, strategically located. One for, um, uh, to meet the zoning ordinance, two, two to obviously meet their requirements um, uh, of screening 
uh, and aesthetics. So the quick, quick question. Ready? Yes, sir. Quick question. Uh, the birch tree that you plan to protect on the northern end around that square box, you might want to take that. I'm pretty sure it's dead. Okay. So, okay. Um, and if it is dead, it would be nice to have make sure that there's something else there in its place. Maybe DOT did it during all their rumblings and ramblings, but um, <laughs> you, you should note that that there's a new new tree put in there that would need to be protected. Um, yeah, right there. Yep. Well then, for Got it. Okay. Very good. Thank you. And, and then as you go north to the bike path, right past the greenhouse, there's about a 60 foot swath there between the old greenhouse and the uh, bike trail. And that's just going to be grass. There's yep. nothing else to run in. That is, that is correct. Um, there had been some discussion early on about the potential for uh, utilizing that area for another use. At this point, it was decided because that was undetermined that we would just kind of go with the current proposal being that that was uh, something that needed to be done timely. Um, so right now, the proposal is, as mentioned, um, for this area to be loamed and seeded. We have some landscaping out front. We're, we're keeping, assuming that birch is okay. Um, but the, the reason we're not planting this extensively as we anticipate there may be something done in the future, but everything else is pretty much uh, well, well screened and it should be aesthetically pleasing. Just while you're mentioning planting, um, where you have the secondary curb cut and it looks like there's a Zalkova and some ink berries over there. Mm -hmm. Are those high? I just worry about the visibility there as someone that just seems like an accident waiting to happen if those ink berries get too high or, is, you know, just, I guess you're, yes. you're doing a canopy and then low stuff below, so you have the site one. Is that the idea? Yeah, um, we, we could we could certainly look at that. Uh, we would be happy to, you know. I typically, I know that there's inspections done by the city when we go out there. We could always swap those ink berry. We do have a, a horizontal juniper um, that could be swapped out. They're a little bit, uh, probably a little bit more salt tolerant. So mm -hmm. we uh, swapping those out near the entrances. I don't think that would be a problem at all. Just um, the general, as we all accommodate ourselves to uh, the, the the circle that's coming, uh, you yes. know, it's first comes first serve. So everyone wants to get there quickly. So people <laughs> are going to be ripping around there if there's no traffic. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully efficiently, but not dangerously, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> sure. So <laughs> let me just interject. This is not a rotary where people zip into the rotary. This is a roundabout, which has much <laughs> lower traffic. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, should announce that at the high school, sure. <laughs> right. But no matter what it is, it is it is faster than stopped at a, st at a red light. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, I do have a light a, a lighting plan. Um, we have 16 foot pole mounted light in the parking area. Um, I'll, I'll zoom in in a minute, but just to give you kind of our lighting schedule, um, we have uh, building lighting as well. I'm not going to steal Chris's thunder, so I'll let him kind of detail the, the lighting on the building. Um, but we do have a series of different wall, call them, I'll call them wall pack or build, building mounted lighting. Um, they're all detailed in our schedule. Um, you can kind of see the description uh, in here. So, you know, our site lighting, so S3 would be the symbol as you're looking at the plans. Um, and then the model number uh, and then the height. Uh, these are all uh, pole mounted. Uh, then if we have wall mounted, it's kind of described that way uh, further down as you're looking at our plan. We also have a calculation summary for the general areas, canopy, uh, the site, the walkway. You see that the white, I'm sorry, the, the, the uh, walkway area is a little bit more intense as you would want it to be. Uh, parking and drive, um, you know, obviously are appropriately lit. Um, I don't believe we have much of any uh, overflow over the property line. As you're aware, right behind us is the bike path. Um, we have the, the roadway out in front. There's really no residential abutters. Um, because of some of the lighting in front, we do have a little bit of spill over to Dammon Road, but I would anticipate that that would probably be somewhat advantageous. Um, and again, there's obviously street lighting that is, I believe, is provided as part of the DOT project. Um, but, you know, as you can see, these are kind of the uh, the locations are a little bit hard to see, um, so I'll zoom in, but this would be a light location. This is the um, the overall canopy that it provides, and then the different 
uh, foot candle. So, you know, 3.5, and then if you get a little bit farther away, it, it dims down. So these are downlit dark sky compliant lights. Um, I believe they're LED, and um, we would anticipate they would be under, that they're energy efficient. They're going to be obviously state of the art new light fixtures. Um, so with that, um, if it's okay, I'd like to uh, have Chris turn on his mic and just show you the building. If that's all right. And, I, and Chris, I can I can put the building up and or or if you have it on your screen, if you can share it, maybe it would be easier. Um, I, I do have it on my uh, desktop that I can share. Um, I'm happy to do that. Great. Uh, well, uh, good Hold evening to uh, the chair and board members. Yeah, I'm just going to um, make you able to share your screen. Okay. Just just so the board knows, there is a slight delay uh, with Chris's connection. I've experienced it before, um, so it might be a, just a slight delay if he's uh, you know a little bit behind. It's because of his he's a, or Ashfield or something, right? <laughs> That's exactly right. Uh, yeah. I, uh, well, so good evening to uh, to the board. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to talk about the project. Uh, my name is Chris Farley. I'm an architect with Kuhn Riddle Architects in Amherst. And uh, as Rob said, I am up in Ashfield. There's at least a couple of second delay. Uh, so I'll apologize for that ahead of time. Um, occasionally, it does sound like I'm talking over someone uh, because of that delay. So if that happens, my apologies ahead of time. Um, so let's see. I'm going to share my screen. All right. So um, I have a, I have a, a, a very simple drawing set uh, this evening. It's a three sheet drawing set. Uh, the cover sheet here primarily shows the uh, eye level perspective of the proposed building. Then there's a floor plan and then there's building elevations and signage. Um, so I think what I'd like to do is just talk a little bit about uh, the overall uh, look and feel of the building. Uh, as Rob said, it is the existing, uh, primarily the existing fish hook restaurant. Um, the, uh, we're maintaining the, the building structure, uh, the exterior walls, the roof line, it's all going to be the same. Um, there is going to be, we're proposing a 10 foot addition essentially on the north uh, toward the bike path. Uh, that's about from here to the end of the building. The, the profile is identical to the existing building, so it will just, uh, it'll look very much like the existing fish hook. It'll just be 10 feet wider. Uh, we are proposing uh, all new finishes on the exterior of the building, uh, new windows and window locations, um, uh, new uh, uh, entry and exit doors for the public, uh, new, new stained wood siding, painted wood trim uh, and a new uh, metal roof, uh, several skylights uh, to illuminate the public portion of the building inside. Um, and then uh, we, we do have uh, three signs we're proposing. Uh, this one here is the, is the main uh, uh, sign. Uh, it's dimensional letters uh, internally illuminated uh, and that's over the, uh, the, uh, the new entry door. Um, we, we have some, some new uh, concrete paving out front. The intention is that that would be uh, a tinted paving uh, to tone it down a little bit so it would be most likely a gray, a gray paving. Uh, there'll be a fence, a small section of fence here, uh, which is going to screen the employee entry, um, the area that Rob described as deliveries uh, for, for drop-offs and pickups. Uh, and that's also where the uh, exterior dumpster will be uh, behind that, that fence. Uh, you can see here, this is the existing uh, small office building. Uh, the, what is currently, uh, or what was currently the Sitterly Movers uh, building. So that building is to remain, uh, but as Rob said, there are, will be no changes made to that, uh, to that building. Uh, so let's see. 
we have a small roof plan here. Uh, as I said, it's, it's uh, the existing uh, building profile uh, of the, the existing, uh, the former Fishhook restaurant. And then this 10 foot addition here uh, on the north, uh, which matches the profile of the existing, of the existing uh, building. So the plan, um, uh, this is uh, at, at the bottom of the screen is the front facade that faces Damon Road. Uh, we're proposing uh, a one-way customer flow. Uh, this is the entrance here, uh, and the uh, customers will come in. Uh, there are some, some low uh, display cases here, and then if necessary, uh, queuing space uh, here. Uh, these are the six point, uh, proposed point of sale stations. Uh, so a customer would come in, walk through the display area, queue if necessary, uh, walk up to one of the point of sale stations, uh, make their purchase, and then they would exit out this door. So it's a one-way flow uh, into and out of the building for the, for the public. Uh, staff uh, would enter here uh, at this uh, staff entry and delivery door in the back of the building. Um, so this is where uh, product deliveries would be made. This is where the staff would come in. Uh, there are some lockers here for staff, a small break room for, for the staff, uh, the vault, which is uh, internal to the building. Uh, so uh, uh, there's good, uh, very good access uh, from the delivery area to the secure vault. Um, in the back here is what we call the day storage and prep. Uh, so that's where the orders would be, uh, would be prepped. Uh, materials would be brought from the vault to that area. Uh, most likely there would be a, a pass through of this back wall uh, and then the uh, staff person at the point of sale station could turn around get the order and give it to the customer. Uh, these spaces here uh, on the south side of the building, uh, that it's an, an existing accessible restroom, so that'll be staying. There's an existing mechanical room and hallway, which will be staying. Um, and a very small addition off the back here, which we're keeping uh, which is currently also uh, a second restroom, which is not accessible. Uh, so we're proposing that that simply be storage. Um, so that, oh, and, and one other thing about, about the front of the building, we're proposing a, a, a line of uh, painted steel bollards in the front of the building, um, primarily to, I, identify what could be an exterior queuing space if it's needed. Uh, there's a, there's, a, there's a, about a three foot overhang on the front of the building from the roof. And so it's a logical place where people could queue on the exterior if necessary uh, before they come into, uh, come into the building. And then um, these are the architectural elevations for the building. Uh, the first one is the front. Uh, this is the back, uh, the one that faces the, the new bike path and Interstate 91. Uh, this is the south elevation, uh, which faces uh, the, new, the new rotary. Uh, and this is the north elevation that, that faces uh, the existing bike path. So we, we do have some new windows. Um, uh, all of the windows will have a, a privacy glazing film on them so that they will transmit light but they, uh, you will, uh, the, the public will not be able to uh, get a view into the building uh, from the outside. Uh, as I said, the, um, the idea is that uh, we would be putting new stained wood siding on the building, so it would be a very warm color. Um, and then there's going to be painted wood trim, uh, which is going to be a very dark gray, very close to black. Uh, new metal roofing, which will be black. Um, uh, let's see, this, this shows uh, that, that little section of uh, fencing here to screen the, the entry, delivery, and the, um, uh, 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 the trash receptacles uh, back there. Um, let's see, let's talk about lighting for just, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. Couple of questions while you're on that slide, Mr. Farley. Um, could you 
talk sure. about the windows again. I didn't quite get that. It will allow light, but it won't allow passerby to look inside. Sure. So, um, so we are uh, increasing the glazing uh, on the front of the building primarily to be able to get natural light into the public space. Um, so all of these windows, uh, they will come from the factory with clear, essentially clear glazing on them. And then uh, once on site, there'll be a, a privacy film. It's, a, it's a, uh, an adhesive film. Uh, it, it basically appears white. Uh, and what it does is it allows light to be transmitted uh, into the building, but uh, because it has a texture to it, it doesn't allow people to see into the space from the outside. So it meets the requirement that, uh, that, that uh, anyone outside the building cannot see into and see any marijuana products uh, in the building. Mm. Um, is that a legal requirement? Just curious. Um, it, 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 it's, um, it is a requirement by the Cannabis Control Commission. Okay. Uh, they have a very specific requirement that, that the public cannot, uh, cannot get a view of any product uh, or any transaction from the exterior of the building. Huh. I didn't know it, it took effect, that method. Okay, interesting. Okay. Um, can I ask a question about that? Since, uh, I mean, presumably, is there going to be floor to ceiling product? Could you have the film only three quarters of the way up or two thirds of the way up? Well, I, um, I, we, we, we looked at a couple of different options and, um, and actually I think, I believe it was Louis Hasbrook, uh, the, the current intermittent uh, building inspector, former uh, building commissioner, he told me that he's had experience with the Cannabis Control Commission where uh, the inspector might come actually push, put their face against the glass and if they can see into the building, they, in the past, they have not passed uh, the facility. And so uh, anecdotally, based on that, he, I, I feel like um, what we need to do to comply with the Cannabis Control Commission requirements is a complete privacy film uh, so that there's no way for the public, no, no matter where they are, to see into the building. Um, there, there are several um, other uh, uh, facilities in Northampton that use a very similar privacy film, so it, it certainly is, is not unusual. Um, however, if, if there's uh, uh, if there's concern about that for any reason, um, we might we could certainly look at, at uh, some other way of handling it. We just want to be sure that we're in full compliance with the Cannabis Control Commission regulations. Yeah, I mean, I think the issue is it's probably the, that personal inspector's interpretation of what the regulation actually says. And so, sure, you're at the mercy of that one individual. Um, I think the issue is, and maybe it's not such a big deal on Damon Road, but as we get more of these, we're going to be seeing essentially blank wall buildings um, that's very, um, that's not consistent with sort of what we want to see in our commercial core. Again, this is not sort of downtown, it's not King Street or Pleasant Street, but um, I think just so the board is aware of what <laughs> this is really going to um, result in is, is um, a series of buildings, <coughs> excuse me, that um, just have blank walls instead of actually have windows. I think this solution is great because the, the film comes off pretty easily. So if this business, God forbid, doesn't succeed and something else moves in, you just take it off and you have a nice window. And, and uh, that's a very good point. Um, and I think uh, to that point, if for some reason the, uh, the full privacy film is, um, uh, is for some reason unacceptable, it is possible that it could come off and, and uh, uh, some other sort of film could be added. Um, I will say that, that what we, uh, the, the, the type of film that we imagine is uh, a film that has a texture enough 
so that you can't see any detail or any specifics, but it does, it, it is translucent enough that it does show a certain amount of movement so that, so that there is a, um, it isn't just a blank facade. You can see uh, uh, changes in, in light and shadow through it. Uh, and you can see uh, a certain amount of movement if the movement is close to the glass. So um, it's, it's, not, it's not opaque. It does have some, um, you know, translucency to it. What we have asked, um, we have asked other applicants with a similar setup with a high demand for privacy that they provide almost a backdrop, a, a kind of a cavity behind that window, um, and the back of the cavity is opaque, and then the between the in that cavity are other display items or something that livens up the wall. Um, now I'm not sure what in light would do for promotional um, advertising in those windows, um, but I think it is a concern just to have that kind of blank look with nothing at all. Um, providing some kind of pickup of the wall of the building. I have a question. So that south facade is uh, facing a bike path. Well, so so this this top elevation here is the this is the uh, the facade that faces Damon Road. Uh, the second elevation here on the sheet, the one with no windows, uh, that is the uh, the side the the back side of the building, efficient uh, essentially. It faces that new section of bike path, and that also faces the embankment that goes up to 91. Um, well, uh, so to the question, a question about how the how the windows are treated. Um, I'm certainly happy to to talk with the design team and the client about uh, you know possibly other ways that we could. Uh, achieve the level of privacy that's required by the Cannabis Control Commission and still uh, also uh, convey the, the image um, and, and get the essentially the aesthetics and the look that the client is looking for. Uh, so we could certainly I, we could certainly talk about potential options. I, I think the I think the films are fine. I think that that's um, adding some sort of other sort of false um, you know, thing in the back of it is, you know, add some element that if it goes to another use is will be unnecessary and, and possibly very possibly undesirable to just about any other kind of uh, owner. And um, the other thing is those films actually, I mean, there's, there's, there's some depth to, to the way they, um, you know, it's not just a flat sort of matte opaque surface that there is some sort of depth and dimensionality um, to the way light travels through them, they just they're just you you can't see you can't see details. Um, so I I think I, I think not not only is it an effective solution for the needs, I think it's I think it's attractive. Okay, well that's that's uh, that's very much appreciated. Thank you. Uh, I I will make one other comment. Uh -huh. Uh, uh, about this location, and, and that is simply that this is an isolated building. It's it's not a, a storefront that is amidst other storefronts. Um, so it it it's a bit of an anomaly building in that respect, since it's a standalone structure. Uh, I do think that if this were a building that was part of a a, a mall or a continuous set of storefronts, um, the, 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 the contrast between the windows here and, the, and, and perhaps clear windows in other typical retail spaces would be dramatic. But since we don't have those other retail uh, spaces, I think that that contrast is not nearly as, as apparent and, and it won't be as objectionable, quite honestly. One of the things about this, this location, um, and I think it's a very attractive building, is that there's, a, I mean, my feeling about it's, it's at the beginning of the bike path. It's the beginning of, it's a entry point into Northampton, which is very uh, fr like family friendly and, uh, and, and warm. 
and I have no problem with pot at all. Uh, but I do think that there's a value in sort of promoting sort of a warmth verse uh, because that's what our town is at its core. So let me just go back to the south facade of the, the building. Uh, I'm not familiar with that bike path. If there is any greenery along, along it, or would it be there be any green in between the facade and the back path? Is there any existing greenery there? Landscape? Oh. Or? You know, through, the, through the chair, I could speak to that. That's okay. Um, I can, I'll go back, to, uh, Chris, if you want to just stop sharing for just one second, I can go back um, and I'll show them the bike path. It's right, almost right up against the back of the building. I don't know how much opportunity, I think I have to be allowed to share again. There we go. So, there is, there, so we do have some screen here. Um, I don't know, maybe Chris can speak to whether or not it would be problematic to extend that a little bit farther down. But so we probably have, I'm going to say the bike paths probably, I don't know what the multi-use paths are, maybe 10 feet. Um, so this could be four to five feet to our property line off of the edge of the bike path. Um, and then we probably have, call it 12 feet or so, um, maybe, maybe a little bit more. Um, to our building. So this would be an, an opportunity to you know, we continue these. Uh, these are uh, arborvitae there. Um, so there will be a screen. We could extend it a little bit if needed, if it wasn't in conflict with any of Chris's uh, work. I think that'd be easy to do. I, 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 from my point of view, I think, I think that would be fine. Uh, there really is very little detail on the back of the building. Um, I think as long as the we didn't have planting so close to the building where it would cause a problem with moisture or something like that. I, I think that would be I'm actually fine. not talking about that part of the bike path. That's the, that's the new thing that um, I'm really talking about the bridge across, across the way and the... Okay. So yeah, this is pretty far from, I mean, you don't see that. You don't really think about yeah, that. Yeah, I apologize. Well, I'm sorry. I mean, I guess I, I mean, I live right here and I, I mean, I think of Gifford's ice cream and this place is right, right next to it. Right. I, I really hope you guys keep the Gifford's thing right. with the, with the pot yeah. shop. It'd really, be wonderful. <laughs> I know the idea that there's nowhere to buy food or drinks here is insane. I mean, yeah, no, not it's... not just the pot shop, but the bike path. I mean, it's. <laughs> It's, they're actually, you know, to, to, to that point, I know it's kind of silly to say, but um, obviously they're not allowed to use the product on the on the premises. So, I mean, the expe okay. expectation is... <laughs> well, we didn't mean that, that kind of edibles. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they the probably wouldn't have the munchies leaving. <laughs> I, I think the screening, the screening that you're just drawing in red here, I, I fail to see what the point of it is. I mean... I think people on a bike path can see a building. I mean, they're not going right. to fall off their bikes. I mean, who cares? Well, I, 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 I'm learning to enjoy to walk in the back, the bike paths, and um, and sometimes not in. I, I'm doing a, a, on a bike path in East Hampton, uh, and it's very cool, very green, and all of a sudden we have this big wall of the, I don't know, metal something manufacturing there and really breaks it. Uh, but it's just an observation that I, I'd rather see some greenery separating it so you can walk and they're using it. You don't right. have to right. Fair it. enough. You know, it's just, um, it's more enjoyable. Hmm. Well, if, if, if I could, uh, and Rob, Rob, maybe you can speak to this as well. Um, the bike path is, um, I think it's at least 250 feet from that, that north side of the, of the building. Uh, there's a parking lot in between. Uh, there, there are a, f a fair a number of, of plantings in between. Um, and the building is quite, is quite low. Uh, so I, 
I, I guess I would say that my feeling is, is that it's not going to be a, a, a prominent feature uh, as you're walking along the bike path. I think the vehicle, I think the vehicles in Damon Road are going to be much more, much more noticeable, quite honestly. Well, While you're on that slide, could you zero in a little bit more on the dumpster location behind that planting? So it's So it would be and, a dumpster here, a uh, little bit area for loading. Uh, the the uh, fence for screening that uh, Chris had spoken about is here, and then some arborvitaes. So they'll be small receptacles. You won't have a truck backing up in there? Uh, they'll be small. There's small delivery trucks. I think most of the, uh, and, and the, the operational folks could speak better about this, but I believe it's like a transit connect small, um, small vehicle. Not, not, a, not like a big box truck or anything like that. So that's all, and, and as far as um, accessing the dumpsters, will there be a large USA truck coming in? I would expect that the dumpster, obviously the cannabis can't be uh, you know, thrown out uh, normally. There's very, very specific rules for that, uh, but the normal refuse uh, would be picked up by a hauling um, company. I would expect that there would be a front loaded uh, dumpster that would come in, grab it, back up a little bit, and then leave. And is that some kind of fencing around the dumpsters? Again, just from the bike path point of view, I don't know how tall those plantings are going to be. Yes, so they so the, there is fencing completely surrounding the dumpster enclosure. Okay, thank you. Yep. Chris uh, Farley, Rob, you an earlier. You were on an earlier slide showing the elevation. And one thing I noticed that I, I think was disgusted, the elevation still shows um, an invite or invite sign on the roof. Um, and I'm pretty sure we don't allow any roof signage in Northampton. Well, so that's a, that's a, that's a very good point. I did, I did see that requirement in the zoning bylaws. Um, I, I reached out to Jonathan Flagg uh, uh, to ask his uh, interpretation on that, and I, I didn't hear back from him. Um, I think my thought was uh, twofold. Uh, one is that uh, the existing Fishhook restaurant has a, a sign. It's, it's actually a, a quite a bit more substantial than the sign we're proposing, and uh, it, is, it is mounted on the roof. Uh, granted, uh, the sign we're proposing is in a different location, uh, but my, my hope was that the board might entertain this uh, because of the precedent set by the previous sign. Uh, and the second, uh, the second reason for proposing a sign here uh, on the roof above the entry is because of how low this facade is and the, uh, the roof line is only about um, seven foot six inches from the ground. Uh, it really doesn't provide um, a very visible way of identifying the business on the building. Uh, so we were, we were trying to, uh, to look at, at a way to uh, raise the sign up so that if people and cars were parked in front of the building, um, it wouldn't obscure the sign. Uh, the, the other, I guess the third factor is simply that the Enlight logo uh, and the individual uh, uh, dimensional letters are quite thin. Um, and, and, and I guess our, our feeling was and our hope is is the board would recognize that it's not a, uh, it's not a large billboard um, uh, that would be above the roof, but relatively small uh, individual letters. So um, would you have it that, turn, would, that, you have that's, it, would you have it turn off after, after closing? Uh, I, I, uh, I believe the answer would be yes for that, uh, but I would certainly defer to uh, any of the owner's representatives that are on the, on the hearing this evening to address that. Um, can I just interject here? The planning board actually does not approve signs and um, the sign code is very clear. And if, if there's a request to um, a, um, construct or install something that's not allowed in the code, that's a zoning board of appeals issue. 
um, the only way pre-existing signs can be reused if they're not conforming is if you're refacing them. So this is a brand new sign. Um, so there's no real yes. precedent for the um, based on the old sign. But at any rate, the planning board has no authority to say, yes, you can put your sign here. So I just want the board to be clear that um, it, when you approve the site plan, you're not approving either the ground sign or any of the wall signage. So, so Carolyn, just to be clear, is is there a um, uh, a, a process for requesting a waiver um, for signage uh, or some sort of a variance? Well, you wouldn't get a variance for a sign because there's you have the ability to put a sign there. You can only get a variance if there's no other viable use of a property. So that's not the case here. Um, there, um, um, roof signs are. It's not like a wall sign where if it's bigger or in a different location, the zoning board has the jurisdiction to um, approve um, something that's bigger or in a different location um, because roof signs just aren't allowed. Um, you do also have a ground sign. So if you're trying to attract people from the street, I mean, this is so, this is off topic for the planning board site plan. So we can talk about it maybe in a different venue because right. I don't want to bog down the board's discussion with the other issues, but. Sure. Um, essentially, you know, the things that would be evaluated were, are, you know, you want to obviously note where the business is, but you've already been pulled in off the street with your ground sign. So once you're there, you know, any kind of wall signage is probably going to be fairly visible to someone who's coming to the building already. So you might, that's the kind of thing that would be considered in the application. Okay. Well, uh, uh, Carolyn, thank you for that, that clarification. Mm -hmm. it, in that case, um, I would say that um, I'll, I'll just talk very, very briefly about the, uh, the, the three signs, um, just to let the board know what we're proposing. And then uh, in a different venue, we can talk about this, uh, this roof sign or, or alternative locations. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have three signs, the one over the door that we're talking about. Uh, on the side of the building that is facing the rotary, the side, uh, we have a, 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 sm a slightly smaller sign uh, so that people would be able to see that coming onto Damon Road or from the rotary. Uh, and then the third sign is a ground mounted sign um, uh, for this particular uh, uh, site and the highway business. There is a, a one ground sign uh, permitted. Uh, the sign that is proposed here meets all the dimensional requirements and that's this sign is located on the extreme southern end of the site uh, very close to the rotary um, and maybe uh, uh, Rob you could I could stop sharing and you could uh, bring up your site plan to show where that sign is I don't know where it is. <laughs> I'm, I'm really sorry, but if, if signs aren't our jurisdiction, can, can we move yeah. on? <laughs> yeah. Sure. It, yeah. I'm, Rob, I'm sorry. Right I'm just the, right in the very, very southern tip. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Your, your point is well taken. Let's, let's move on. Okay. Uh, thank well, you. <laughs> yeah. One, so, I um, I, I, I think my presentation about the, about the building is essentially complete. I'd be happy to take questions. So while we're, now if we could switch back to those slide of the elevation. It's a, a wonderful roof here. It makes me think about solar which the city encourages and the planning board certainly encourages. Have the uh, developer, the owners thought into, put any thought into making these roofs ready to uh, accept solar? 
Um, I, I have not had any specific discussions with the owners about that. Um, uh, so I, 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 I'll say I, I can't speak to that. It is a, it is a fairly low pitched roof. Uh, and so it does certainly have solar opportunities. Um, uh, I, I, uh, uh, I, I know Ryan Ferreter is on this call. I don't know, Ryan, if you might be able to speak to that. Yeah, Chris, Chris, I'm on. Um, I'm certainly to hap certainly happy to think about it and, you know, to maybe get a quote to see uh, what kind of electricity that could produce. Um, just thinking about that being, you know, a, a just over a 2,000 square foot building, it didn't seem, um, you know, that reasonable um, as far as, you know, that size of a building, but uh, certainly something we'd pursue. Um, so just to clarify, the zoning, um, anyone who's coming in for site plan does have to show that the roof is solar ready. Um, doesn't mean you have to install the solar as part of the project. So when it comes time to um, present the building permit for the modifications to that, um, you would just need to show, you know, there's conduit there, the roof can handle it. Um, again, it's not saying you have to install it, but just in the event that in future years the plans change, um, that it's easy enough to put on. Understood. And, and we, we can certainly make sure that the construction documents um, uh, provide the, uh, the solar ready uh, 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 components for that. Great. Uh, any other questions about the building? No, it sounds okay. like we're board okay here. Um, is there another portion to the presentation or does that about wrap it up from your end? That about wraps it up. Okay. Could we go back to the lighting plan for one minute? Sure thing. There, there appears to be a couple of high areas or hot spot areas. Um, and I don't know if that's directly underneath some of the uh, large parking lots that you're adding. Um, I see one here in the middle of the lot, like the 4.4, pretty close to the road. Um, the maximum allowed level is five, but maybe you could go over to your table to see what the maximums are shown in the table. I didn't quite hear that, Carolyn. I was just asking to, um, them to show the table. Maybe that would um, identify the total maximum. Um, light levels. So yeah, there's a 23.4 maximum under the canopy. Can you, do you can you show where that is? That seems quite bright, given the maximum allowed levels are five for the highway business district. It's right at the door, oh. which seems logical, but it is under the canopy. Chris, Chris, you may be able to speak to the lighting on the building. So even with um, at gas stations and our gas station canopies, um, the board has not allowed more than um, five foot candles in some scenarios. So those are um, obviously much more intense uses at night. Um, and uh, Carolyn, I'm, I'm sorry, is that um, is that for parking lot lighting or is that for a kind of walkway 
uh, for instance, right, right at the main entry of a building, if it's building mounted sign, is that, is that this, or building mounted lighting, is that the same uh, yeah. threshold, the, the five foot candles maximum? Yeah. Okay. Well, so, um, uh, uh, the one thing I, I did not talk about was lighting. We have a series of, uh, of uh, cylindrical down lights proposed around the building. Uh, including uh, uh, one on either side of the front door, one on either side of the uh, exit door. Um, we could certainly look at a, uh, a different specification uh, with a, a less bright uh, driver for those LED lights. Um, we also do have um, proposed uh, recessed down lights in that, in that front roof overhang. It may be that that's just too much light for the front of the building. So we could look at reducing or eliminating those lights as well. It, I guess it, from what Carolyn, from what you're saying, it sounds like we'll, we'll have to look at some sort of reduction to get those numbers down. Yeah. The planning board has to approve anything that's greater than the maximum levels in the zoning, which are five and so the board has had uh, um, at various times requests to go higher. Um, but again, as I mentioned, even for um, gas station canopy lighting, um, the board has approved um, much lower maximum levels than what you're showing. Okay. Uh, well, certainly we will, we will look at uh, alternative fixtures um, and what I would say is that if we, if we find that uh, we feel there's a need for a greater level of light at the, at the front facade here or at the entry or the exit, um, we, we would certainly propose uh, uh, perhaps a specific uh, um, lighting solution for those areas and, and uh, uh, bring that to the board's attention. Yeah, so one thing that for the board, um, just to know that you could approve um, the permit with the maximum light levels allowed in the zoning, and then the applicant can come back for an amendment if they feel that they can't meet that, and then they can provide rationale for why they need that amendment at that time, is one approach to, to sort of allowing the project to move forward at this point. The other approach would be to come to staff with a revised plan that shows that they need all of the the requirement of less than five right so that would be part of it if you approve the plan but with um you know that ultimately the the build out has to show five foot candles or less and then if the applicant wanted an amendment to that at some point you know down the road if they needed to come back they could do that okay. i would that would be great um, just yeah, that, that sounds fine. Thank you. Uh, as promised before, uh, I did discuss um, in a kind of a change to our entry as requested. Uh, Carolyn had mentioned that she was they weren't comfortable with kind of what we had proposed, which this is the edge of the drive aisle um, on our site plan. Um, this red is a revision that we made. Um, and obviously, if that's uh, adequate, we would we would go with the 14 foot wide on the way out, uh, also extending and uh, you know having a tighter radi uh, radius here. Yeah, and just so on that note, I will um, let you know that um, the city engineer had indicated that given that you don't know the the uses on the site um, and what kind of trucks might be exiting there that from the DPW's perspective, they were okay with the 20 foot um, exit there. Um, my concern, as I mentioned to the board, to you and to the board is that, um, you know, it is a special permit to have two curb cuts um, and you're trying to make this as a right out only exit. Um, and I don't think that's achievable with, unless it's, um, you know, redesigned as you've shown. Um, so I just want to put that out there for the board to um, sort of understand and, and potentially discuss sort of the ramifications of, of those two issues. Yeah, I, I was troubled by this whole part of the 
vehicular circulation just i mean i don't know what it's going to be like once the road construction is there but it certainly is if there is a lot of backup on damon it certainly is an attractive nuisance to cut through the parking lot to jump ahead in line uh sort of say i'm going to the pot shop oh i changed my mind i'm gonna get back on you know um i don't know if that's avoidable if you have any second at all so um the other thing is if you're at the handicap spaces and then you make a mistake and go down that way and then you know and if it gets too tight it, it, it becomes kind of a hazardous area as well i guess um do you have do you need i mean what's it, explain again about this existing building this little shack that's down there <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's a used for a moving company. I think it's an office for them. Uh, obviously, they're not they're not using uh, big equipment or anything there. But um, it's I think it's also acts as a billboard. It's obviously a pretty heavily traveled location, so I think they get probably a lot of calls just be based on the sign being there. But in terms of vehicular access, they they would just tie into whatever circulation you're creating. Yeah, I mean, and then and just so everybody knows. The curb cut that we were originally showing is consistent with the improvement plan shown in Damon Road. Um, so we actually tailored our entrance right off right off the line work that was provided in the plan. So, you know, we felt a little bit more comfortable with 20 foot wide. Obviously, as mentioned, you depend on exactly who's leaving. Um, you know, and again, there may be the the opportunity for these folks. I'm sure they have, you know, trucks and whatnot, and they're going to need to be able to get out. So we would like the, we really do need and think we need this uh, exit to function. However, you know, you know, I don't know, not, we don't want to be moving curbs more than once, but um, I guess my thought is if DPW didn't have a problem with it, we'd like to try to maintain the 20 foot. If it's a problem for the planning board, um, we have this sketch that's an alternative that we could certainly, you know, condition you know, if you, if, you know, if you felt moved to approve the plan, um, we could can certainly, that could be a condition that we could easily re resolve for you if that was necessary. What kind of barrier is on, is in the, is in the middle there? Um, uh, it's a curved, uh, curved barrier here and then just striping. So it's, it's theoretically possible somebody could, could try, try to take a left there. Yeah, it'd be tricky. It seems but, unlikely, though. I mean, it seems. <laughs> yeah, we would have to do non entry signs. They'd be taking their lives into their own hands. But yeah, I've I've seen crazy things. <laughs> yeah. well, the, the benefits to doing it is small because there's another entrance just a hundred, couple hundred feet down the road. Right. Um, it's not like you have to drive around a block or something. Right. Where we currently we have a situation at the new Dunkin' Donuts at the other end of Damon Road. <laughs> I wasn't on the planning board at that point. And they have a sign there. There's only one entrance and one exit together. And it's, it's a no left-hand turn sign, which is totally ignored. Um, but I, I think as David said, though, this is yet a third, or at least a second exit. So we'll avoid kind of what they go through at Dunkin' Donuts when people go left into that traffic. Yeah, but the, I mean, the traffic, I, I've never seen anybody take a left left there. And this is a different matter. I mean, this, I mean, the whole point of this roundabout is that the traffic keeps moving. And, um, you know, in, in both directions, I, it seems, I mean, it seems unlikely to me that people, I mean, it seems like a much riskier place for somebody to take a left. So I mean, so I guess that's a reason to take further measures to make sure they don't. But by the same token, that it seems to be, um, I mean, you know, the, the thing about Damon Road and the Dunkin' Donuts is traffic is stopped there. So people, can, I, in, theor in theory, you know, kind of also like the left out of the CVS, um, you know, out of, out of that side parking lot on the CVS on, um, on um, uh, Bridge Road. Um, you know, you're not supposed to take a left there, but traffic is stopped. So sometimes people do, but here, I, you know, it seems like traffic would keep moving. It would be difficult to do that, but there's, I don't know. It's, it's the same as for making it impossible for making it or nearly impossible. This is, this is not impossible. I, I think everyone, if people would take a left out of here, no doubt. I mean, there's the gas station by the roundabout that they just built on the other 91 exit and people take a left out of there all the time. 
across traffic. Yeah. Here, I mean, it's without extending the the curb that that the state's building. I don't see how you could block it. Yeah, I mean, I will say that for, for the states have left the sort of the. I mean, it's I guess it's not the state thing, but where the curb cut is, um, and not have extended the curb in the middle just a little bit more. I, you know, I, it makes sense to make it almost impossible. It, okay, it so be. so with that, hearing that, um, we can, you know, we can make it 14 feet wide and make it more acute. I guess. Do you need to have this second exit? Yeah, we really do to make th this uh, second, you know, user functional. Yeah, there's no real way to get well. And it does. Uh, it does provide, you know, nice nice options for people that are heading to the right when they exit. I mean, it's just hard to judge. Like, how many people are going to be trying to cross to get to the left hand lane? You know, I I, I don't know. This, I don't. We're certainly not the people to make those judgments either. Yeah. I mean, the high, the peak traffic, though, out of this facility is not that high, so I don't know. It's not that big a deal. I mean, I guess the other thing I wonder also about that spot, you know, knowing that intersection well, is that, I, A, that little tiny, you know, building over there, how many, how much traffic is it going to come from there, sort of preserve a whole curb cut for the sake of that? And then the other thing is, is that, is that if traffic is heavy, the, I could see, you know, pr people because it's 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 two way right in front of the in front of the shop itself in the in the handicapped spot, parking spot. So what I could see is like it's hard to make a right hand turn there that close to the rotary. So then you you know they, people go anyway to the other entrance um, to make the right out of there. Um, so I, I I don't know I I kind of I, I kind of wonder about the utility of it. it. Seems like it's very low traffic, low use area for that little building and and what the what their gravel parking is i don't know it, se it seems like a lot of accommodation for a, a pretty low well, use. Well, let me just say that the, the marijuana marijuana shop that we have on uh Mesa, you know king street right uh they always have cops there to help the orange cones I mean that is traffic they just a real range of what that part purchased that property that house they turned on parking so i think there will always be you know a significant amount of traffic um you know based upon what we have away on king street so i do not downplay the traffic of folks or i don't know in well, recently close to the rotary People come from other towns. It's maybe I don't know. Well, I guess I would ask. I mean, is it the thought that 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 gravel parking area over there would be like overflow parking for the shop itself, or is it for access for this you know little tiny business that basically? Yeah, it's it's access for the for the sm that small business. Then, there. then in that case, why not why connect them? Why not just make that gravel parking lot go to this curb cut that you're showing, and. And I mean, our our general feeling is that option more options are better um, for people leaving the site. I mean, generally people going, uh, we'll call that, was that west, north, or northbound? That's that's fine as a general principle, but in specific here, it's not a better. Oh, I think I mean, we, we do think we do think it is. I mean, we're not we're not adding. You know, certainly if we if we change the curb cut here a little bit so that people can't take a left. It's it's nice to have the option to, to take a right here on the way out. Um, somebody comes in and comes in and out of the front area here. Uh, we don't see how it's detracting from you know they already have the curb cuts now. Uh, I don't see it as a big detraction from the site. I think if anything, um, you know, it's a. Nice I think comparing it to what's there now is totally irrelevant because all the uses are changing and the highway use is changing and everything. I think the only way you're going to prevent people from taking a left is if you move it 40 feet towards the roundabout and then you have a whole other set of issues. Yeah. I, 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 just don't, I don't see, I don't think you can stop people from making a left there. I mean, it's just, I'd do it. Right. Well, yeah. and frankly, the, it, as close as it already is to the roundabout, I, I, People are going to get used to this roundabout, and they're going to be going. And the, the closer you are to the roundabout, the the less safe it is to have people turning right yeah. at that point. I mean, you're better off backing them up. 
closer to the, the, the pedestrian light by the, the bike trail um, so that they can see people coming from farther away away, have a, have a ramp up time to the, to the thing. I don't, I mean, I, I don't, I mean, I'm not a traffic expert, but I, I don't particularly see the utility of this second curb cut if we don't have to have it. I don't know if the um, proponents want to speak to the use of this building. And yeah, I, I would just speak to the, you know, another tenant being in there, uh, you know, apart from the dispensary at all. Um, as far as the left hand turns, um, there's a, you know, the existing curb cut that exists on the north side, they're going to be able to take their left hand turns, not only 100 feet up, but they can take a right and turn around a rotary 100 feet right and then turn around to make that left. So they're going to have two options to turn around, you know, whether they make that left or go around the rotary and take that left all within a few hundred feet. I think. Right. So why do you, so why do you, I just think, I just think, I just think to Marissa, to your point, I just think to lose that second curb cut as far as that second tenant space goes. Um, I just think accessibility, uh, you know, I, I just think, you know, it wouldn't make much sense as far as that, that second tenant at the existing building with the existing temp who's been there for, I believe over 10 years. The current application that shows us nothing about the existing tenants or anything. If that's the case, like show us something about them. I believe it does. I believe in the narrative it, it does. So what, so what is it? Well, I mean, so, but so what we heard is it's a moving, it's a moving storage company that has, has virtually no traffic and is basically an office and a great place for them to have a sign. Uh, I, I used to drive on that intersection and it is very, other than see one or two big trucks, I don't see traffic in other private vehicles and you know it's rare. The, the, all the circumstances that I drove by, I didn't, it could be any time of the day, here in the morning because I used to go to Amherst to teach and there, so I always drive it, so I, I think either way it doesn't work. It's either a very useful thing that means a lot of cars are going to use it, which means we don't want to use it, or it's not that useful because not that many cars are going to use it, in which case you don't need it. So what, to, I mean, either way, it seems like it's a bad idea to put it there. I, I so I respectfully disagree and I will tell you why. And I, and I, I'm not doing, I'm not disagreeing just to, just to argue. Um, <laughs> no, I understand you want the curb cut. I get that. No, 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 no but I'll tell you why. So when's the last time you drove into a dead end parking lot? I don't know. Okay, so picture this, you're driving in. Now we, want, we have to have our, our uh, handicap accessible parking directly adjacent to the building, as you're aware, close, closest accessible route to meet 521 CMR, which means right in front of the building. Uh, we also, you know, our entrance is literally right here. The goal here is to prevent, to have, you know, if we, have a, if we have a dead end parking lot here, you're gonna have to pull, pull in, you know, maneuver out. This way you can just go in and leave. I mean, right. Well, but it doesn't. Always try to avoid dead end parking lots and try to provide options. I mean, the natural the natural flow is going to be through here for these parking spaces. I okay, but those these. those cars can just as easily pull out and go to the northeast to the northwest. I understand your general principle, but this is not a general principle. This is right next to a brand new whatever fifty million dollar rotary. I mean, I, I just it doesn't seem like a good thing in this specific situation. Or if, you, if that's such an issue, give them a turnaround on your gravel parking lot or something, you know, with this other mysterious tenants. Well, I mean, it, they, it's they, only they, the handicapped parking spots and, and there is a place to turn, turn around. I mean, you, you could block it off so that it's truly a dead end, but I actually, as long as people can back out, I mean, it's, um, it doesn't strike me as that big of a deal, but you could, you could leave it open. They just don't have a way to exit right there so they can turn around and come back through the, through the two-way area in front of the handicap, and and it's just those two parking spots. Um, so I, so I don't. It, it doesn't seem to me. It doesn't affect the parking for the store really very much at at all. I'm just so confused. I mean, if you make a left here, is that just a double line? Is there actually is there something in that in that double line there? I believe this is just striping here. 
Uh, I, I, that's my understanding. Carolyn might know better. This, I, I mean, believe, is, it, is a physical island here. I mean, should there be a left hand turn out of the other side, really, given that it's a rotary? I mean, you know, right there on a rotary. Hey, and, the, like, and the bicycle, you, um, you know, the pedestrian light is right there. If it was moved a little bit to the right, <clears throat> more in front of the that the um, more in front of the. I think the you start to get too close to the split in the rotary. Right. Are you thinking of you were you were saying if you moved it to the right here? You mean? Yeah. Just so so that so that it's like extra hard to make the left. We're just trying to make it as hard as possible to make a left. Yeah, I understood. understood. I don't know. I kind of think we don't need it. <laughs> I, 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 I feel like it's, it's, it's even the right hand turn looks potentially um, not, not safe and, and the utility of it not great relative to the risk. I mean, I'm just the average age of the drivers in Northampton is such that people are going to be very confused here. I, I just, I think it's dangerous. There's just too many, there's people coming off highways, there's a bike path, there's all these things. It just seems like maybe it's a marginal benefit, like you're saying to the one or two or three people parking there. It just doesn't seem worth it for the city's perspective. Can you pull that drawing down a little bit so we can see the in and out exit near the uh, bike path? Yeah. I'd have much less of a problem keeping the 24 foot uh, curb cut, making that a little wider, to be honest, to make that a little more generous. That seems like fine. You know, it's far enough from everything. I don't see particularly why that needs to be narrowed down if, if, it, if it's getting a fair amount of traffic compared to, I mean, that to me seems less important than just this, this, this second curve path. I guess, I, I mean, as someone, I walk my kid down this bike path, I'd rather people leave, I'd rather people leave to the right than go, I mean, like that thing is that is actually close to the bridge. The the first curb cut. The bike bridge, the the trestle bridge. Yeah. But that that's going to be the main in in and out, no matter what. I think, unless right. we ask them to move it. <laughs> No. Yeah, and and I I actually think that like if traffic's backed up, people may just choose to to turn right anyway. I mean, I mean turning left there if it is possible and safe to do so doesn't seem like a huge deal to me, especially during you know uh, you know kind of off hours. Um, but if it's if it's busy in traffic, people are just going to turn right and go around the rotary because why not? Right. Bob, are, are there any issues you see with uh, emergency vehicles, uh, emergency services? Is, does this second curb cut provide them with a better route, a better way to service this property? It's more options. I mean, you know, it's easier. They generally like that. They don't like to have to back out or turn around. Um, that would be something they would have to do. I mean, realistically. Um, but again, if yeah, yeah, I mean, that, that is a consideration. Well, I, yeah. If I dead end them in, so let's just say we do this, right? I want to be clear. I don't think anybody has suggested you dead end that and, and close off the gravel parking. That well, would allow- but that, that creates a dead end here. Right. So well, yeah, but not... it's a huge turnaround. It's I mean, it's not a dead end like it's a. Mm. I mean, I, I I think that's a mischaracterization of what that is. Uh, it's pretty much a dead end. But you know. Well, I mean, yes. It, I mean, it's it's a dead end, but it, it's a dead end. It's a parking lot. It's, it is a. Um, when I think of a dead end, I mean like street width. That's all. 
somebody would have to do it like a three point turn to, to turn around. Correct, including emergency vehicles. I don't think that's that. I mean, I know that parking lot. That's uh, somebody could easily just go around, including I, I think. I mean, they're look, in, including emergency vehicles. I mean, that's a that's a big area. Well, it is now, but it'll be lawn. This is all going to be lawn. We're trying to improve the area here. Has the fire department looked at this? It's been no. circulated to the through, the through the normal channels. I'm not. I haven't seen anything from the fire department in terms of comments. They wouldn't have responded to say that, you know, I think they would have looked at it and said, this is fine, I don't have any issues, but they wouldn't say the opposite, like, you know, it's okay if you don't put this here, or, uh, <laughs> right, of course, you know, <laughs> they're not going to redesign the, the site. No, I was just wondering if they've already reviewed it or if they were going to get it after this. Um, no, I, it, to my knowledge, I don't think they've seen this layout. I mean, DPW again, um, as I mentioned, did evaluate it and, and look at it and sort of, they look at it with those eyes about, uh, with, um, trying to ensure that vehicle access, um, is, um, manageable through that. Um, but really, the jurisdiction of the from the plan is from, with the planning board about whether or not a second curb cut makes um, a flow safer and is appropriate. Um, so that's um, you know, despite the fact that DOT designed this cut the way they did, um, um, you know, there are potentially three users on this site. So even though they're loaning and seeding the northerly end you know you did hear that there will um their plan is to find another use on that end and the and the, um you know that small box um slash office that's there could potentially also be another user so you know if you think about it as a instead of just one use on the site it could potentially it will be multiple uses uh, we hope in the future so that we're maximizing our commercial space um, so in that light, you know, it may be appropriate to have two entrances to serve at least three businesses. Um, I actually, this is really just meant as an exit, so it's not an entrance, but at any rate, those are sort of the things that I think within the funding board's jurisdiction. Um, and really my, uh, initially just to reiterate, my concern was just the fact that people might try to make that left turn out of there because the center island and Damon Road isn't extending quite that far. But to Marissa's point, um, you know, if someone's having a difficulty making left out of the site anyway, the roundabout is the perfect solution because it doesn't take much time to zip back around and go back the other direction that you had intended to go anyway. So, um, I guess I feel like I mean, the whole point, I mean, I, I get what the objection is to, to this, this term, but the point of this roundabout is to offer someone the ability to go around it. And I, and I know that there's going to be people who are going to do not nice things and make a left there. But I mean, we are we're putting this thing in so that people can go around. I mean, are we just... Are we just trusting? Are we are we automatically thinking that that this fifty million dollar project isn't going to serve its purpose? Damn. Sam, I I must admit this is George. I didn't get all of your observation there, all of your comments. Oh, I, I was saying that. I mean, the point of this roundabout is so that people do go around. I'm not sure I mean, why we can't trust that that's what's going to happen and allow the, the curve. Like, but I mean, I, 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 I get that, that someone can't make a left there, but A, we've allowed it down the street with Dunkin' Donuts. I live right next to them. I can never see someone. I also don't hang out and watch for it. Uh, <laughs> but um, uh, shoot me if I do. Uh, so, but, you know, I think that, that I, I understand. 
again, I mean, I, I sort of think like some of the reasons. I can't hear it. I know, Sam, it's very difficult hear to hear it. you. In and out. Maybe. Is that working? Yeah. Uh, it seems better. Let's see. Uh, I mean, it just seems like we we allowed the other one. I don't see people doing that. Um, there's a rotary right here, which I personally would use um, because it'd just be easier and safer. And and I I mean, and so I why not why not allow? It? So so here's I mean, because I really have a question about how the, the speed is going to go up there. It's not going to have that backup, you know, that the red lights have, you know, always caused. I mean, can we suggest at this point that at, at this point, at least, or initially that they not you like, like allow the curb cut, but, you know, sort of like what we did in the, with the, with the previous application, which is um, that they at least for the moment um, block that egress um, so we can see how traffic flows. I mean, you know, part of this is also like, this is brand new. It's brand new to everybody in Northampton. And, you know, I, I go by there, people are losing their minds. Um, so, um, and, and I, I'm sympathetic to the idea that there could be another use for this, you know, for where that smaller building is and that there could be another use, but until we see how traffic is really behaving there, um, you know, so by the same token, I, I would hate to like put in the curb and then some, you know, future, you know, business owner has to, you know, cut the curb again and apply for the application again. I mean, is Carolyn, is that a possibility that we could have like approve it? but at least conditionally say that that they they need to wait to use it until we learn more about the traffic no i mean you're presented with a, an application and a special permit request for that second curb cut so you need to make the decision about whether it's appropriate and makes it safer for this um at this location um it's awfully hard to ask of us when we when the, it's not even done. <laughs> yeah, but but I mean, I, part of it is like DP or whoever whoever mass whatever development that did this. I mean, presumably, they spent this massive sum of money on this thing. We're supposed to understand that I guess it's safe, and what's we can go with that. And and I personally think I mean there. Clearly, in the future, this little building is going to be torn down, and they're going to build a nice building there to rent to an ice cream stand, an ice cream stand, or something like that. And um, and then that exit will make a lot of sense. I understand why they want to do it because it helps with their real estate. And I don't, and I don't see the negative. I don't see the. I don't see the danger that other people. See. Yeah. I, th yeah. I mean, the danger to me is is the whole point of the roundabout is to keep traffic flowing rather than have the stop, the, these backups that we always had with the stoplights, yeah. right? So yeah. the point is to keep traffic flowing. So what keeps traffic from flowing is some 17, or I guess it's an 18 year old here at this place, coming <laughs> out of this place, making a left turn, or to be honest, a right turn, and dinking someone's bumper because it's just a complicated intersection and people are coming off of roundabout not knowing what they're doing or they think they're through the roundabout so they're flying down the road. It's just a, it's a point of conflict that creates a potentiality to have an accident and that stops traffic. Not to mention hurts people and all those other bad things. <laughs> and so I think that, and, and plus, you know, I mean. I mean, the other thing is like when the DPW, I mean, or sorry, when the, the, the Department of Highways like when they came up with the plan for this roundabout, this was a nursery. <laughs> I mean, does that matter? I mean, I mean, oh, obviously they knew the use could change. Well, it was but... the restaurant, right? It was a restaurant. No, it was a busy restaurant during much of the time of the day. A Listen, busy I wanna... restaurant? <laughs> I want to hold just for a second and make sure our friends Alan and uh, Marissa have a time to chime in on this second exit. Mm -hmm. 
Are you still with us, Alan? <laughs> yeah. My my view is that we've I think beaten this to death for forty minutes, and um, it's not clear to me which is the better or worse plan. I think there are arguments both ways, and I'd be willing to defer to the way the applicant has laid it out. But I, I think. Um, we could spend forever at this rate. I agree there's with always that. some. There's always something to be said for voting. Melissa. Yes, um, I'm sort of on the same wavelength as Alan. I I hear and I understand both arguments. I I like the way it flows. I think. Um, I think Alan's. Said it, said it the way I would say it. I, I think I would defer to the way it's been designed because um, I do think there'll be additional businesses in there and it might be a nice exit point. Uh, might make things easier for a lot of people. Maybe the only exit point. Mm -hmm. No way. No. Um, yeah, and I think of other roundabouts in the city, certainly the one at the bottom of Pleasant Street that has the bowling alley. There's a dead end parking lot, the big bowling alley, and it's a left end. And it's a pain in the butt if you're a bowler and you want to go left out of that bowling alley. But somehow they do it. There's enough people that allow them to come out and it doesn't clog up the roundabout per se. And uh, people are patient. I, I think. Um, you know, I, I think giving more options on this lot too is more helpful than not. I think folks will learn that 17-year-old, that 18-year-old, hopefully he's not a weekly customer here, but maybe he will be. Um, <laughs> you know, I think he'll learn how to deal with that, that coming and going on the right-hand side. Um, and if the, uh, the change is made to that, to cut it down to 14, to add that extra tongue coming into the lane, and giving one of those big signs to say no left-hand turn, I think it's a much better option than certainly the one that was approved at Dunkin' Donuts. Um, it forces the driver to go right yeah. much more than being just a straight out um, exit to the main thoroughfare. Yeah, and so, I think we ought to move on. Yeah. But, Marissa and David, thank you. I appreciate your thoughtfulness around, you know, this traffic and flag erasing. It is tough, and we're not going to know how this roundabout works for another year or so. Well, we, you know, we, we should vote. <laughs> we'll see, you know, we'll see how it goes. I'm happy to vote. <laughs> so, you know, we still haven't opened it up for the public comment. Um, are there any questions besides the second exit, the, the Elevations we talked about, the planning plan, the bike path. Anything else for the applicant at this point for the board? <clears throat> All right, why don't we give the public a chance to weigh in? It's been pretty quiet tonight, but is there anybody out there in the public who um, would like to speak either in favor or against the application at this time? All right, hearing none, all of those folks out there that we don't know are part of the uh, the team, I guess, the application team. Um, I'll move to close the public hearing. Second. Thank you, Alan. Seconded by Yuri. All right, and a roll call. Um, our My screen has changed a little bit, so Melissa, how do you feel about that vote? Close yes. public hearing. Yeah. Yes. Second. Close the public hearing, Sam? Yes. Yuri? Yep. All right, Marissa? Yes. And David? Yep. All right, and I'm going to say Alan? Yes. Okay, and George, yes, unanimous. Okay, so, so that means at this point we're not talking to the applicants anymore or the team. We're just amidst ourselves. To, Discuss the merits of this application.
Um, I would like to um, just throw out there that um, you know the applicant talked about the increase in the um, in uh, um, sort of restoring the site to um, natural state by low maintenance feeding a, a significant portion of the site that currently has building and, and pervious, um, and that if the site were to change in the future uh, with new buildings would be great, but the um, at that time, the applicant would likely have to address um, stormwater issues. Obviously, then we're sort of reverting back to building and and um, and impervious that um, that uh, might need to be addressed at that time. But um, at any rate, anything over 2,000 square feet of new construction would trigger a site plan review. So that would come in as part of sort of that review as well. But for, as you've seen in the plans for the um, short term, anyway, this is um, the site actually will have um, less impervious surface than the existing condition. So as it relates to stormwater. Carolyn, just to make sure I understood the gist of that, if they develop that far northerly parcel, they'll have to come back in front of the the planning board. Right. With mm -hmm. the, oh. yeah. Can someone summarize the conditions or issues that we have in front of us? Obviously, there's the second exit issue, but other than that? Um, sure. I can do that, or George, you can do yeah. that either one. No, go right ahead, Carolyn. Um, so there had, and I, um, there had been an issue about um, um, uh, the um, building, the roof being solar ready, that that needs to be shown on the plans, on the building permit plans. There had been discussion about um, window shading. So I think um, that should be wrapped into the decision, whatever the vote is, you know, to approve what was as submitted, obviously. Um, and I don't know if there's any more discussion about that. Um, and um, then the lighting um, plan, um, I would recommend that you approve um, no waivers for, on the lighting um, for the light levels. Um, and let's see, I don't know if there was anything else um, we had just got in my staff um, memo I suggested that um, that uh, revised plans um, stamped by an engineer be submitted prior to issuance of the building permit and that tree replace um, tree protection be um, installed for the existing trees and there was a notation I guess that one of the trees may not be um, there anymore or may be dead um, <laughs> so we wouldn't need tree protection for that. And I think that was it. And then, Carolyn, your notes say that the southerly driveway opening shall be reduced to 15 feet, but we've been talking about 14 feet during this discussion. Yeah. I think that's a, you know, discussion about whether it needs to be narrowed or 20 feet is it appropriate. As I mentioned, um, DPW was fine with the 20 foot um, width. It sort of maintains, I guess, the condition of um, what's there, um, but in, within the new configuration of um, the design for the roundabout. <clears throat> so that'll be another condition. Right, so the plans originally submitted showed the 20 feet. So yes. depending on what the board feels, how the board feels about narrowing it or um, allowing it, you know, that's up to you all. I think I think I might suggest that we that somebody move to adopt uh, all the conditions that Carolyn mentioned, and then regarding the 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 second curb cut to to do the reduced, so not the twenty foot, but the fourteen the the fourteen foot that was proposed. Go for it. So that we can we can vote on the one that seems to have the most uh, consideration at the moment. So we can get that out of the way first, and then 
move on to other things if that doesn't pass. Okay. So I, I guess I would so move. <laughs> Is there a second? A second. Second by Sam. So there's a motion on the floor to accept the plan pretty much as presented except for the change in the southerly driveway and the other conditions Carolyn mentioned around the lighting and uh, the, the solar ready roof being demarcated and then it doesn't address the window treatment but then with that motion we'd be accepting the window treatment as it's been presented. So, George, Southerly Driveway is the one we've just talked about for 40 minutes or the other one? Correct. Correct. 35 minutes we stand on that, Alan. Right. How do you feel about it, Alan? I could have sworn Talk it was about it some more? <laughs> it just felt like 40. I don't know what to say. Uh, Any other discussion on the motion? So the motion would be to approve the application as submitted in including the second exit. But Am with the, the narrowing from 20 foot to 14 foot oh, for, the, all right. for the egress. Okay, yeah. so the, other than that, it would be as submitted. Pretty much, yes. Except for the lighting. Lighting, right. right so is there a second? So what is second? Marissa made the motion. Sam seconded it. Is there any other discussion? Okay, then we'll move to a roll vote, and I'll start with Melissa. Yay or nay? Uh, yay. Okay, and Sam. Sam Taylor. You're on mute. Okay. Yay, Yuri. Yep. Yep. Marissa. Nay. Nay. And David. Nay. And Alan. Yes. Yes. And the chair will vote yes also. So one, two, three, four, five, six in favor, two opposed. All right. So I think, Mr. Levesque, you have your kind of marching orders and what you need to get back to Carolyn with. Yes, I do, sir. Thank you for your time tonight. So just to clarify, that passed? <laughs> it did, <Correct>. yes. <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, guys. We appreciate it. Thanks, and good luck. It looks like a great project. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. <sighs> Thanks, everyone. Are we done? No. Can we be done? No, of course. Oh. We have a couple of ANRs. So <laughs> you pick with this ANRs in Northampton. And minutes. I oh. love these. I love the ANRs. We can't not approve them. <laughs> I have approved them. <laughs> well, I want to vote no one of these days just because. Um. I, Marissa, I did vote no one once, and I got my hand slapped because I didn't have a good rationale. So you better be ready for it. All right. It, it can't so, be arbitrary and capricious. I think I learned that in law school, right? <laughs> That's right. So we want to uh, uh, review and approve the minutes from July 9th. I move that we approve them. Second. Seconded by Yuri. All right, quick voice vote to approve the minutes. Melissa? Yes. And Sam? Yes. Yuri? Yes. All right. Alan? Yes. Thank you. Uh, David? Yes. I want to call you uh, Clement Housebrand all night. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Marissa? Yes. All right. So it's unanimous. And now we have some a r Carol. Yes. Um, so let me pull those up. I have them all on one sheet. Hold on just a second. Um, let me see if I can find it. Um, okay. Jeez. Um, okay. So, um,
sorry, um, be taking so long. I was so organized and that was such a long. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do these one by one. Um, so we have, um, geez, Holly Street. Um, let's see, I'm gonna share my screen here. Uh, so, well, let's do Chesterfield Road first. So, can everybody see this? Yep. <clears throat> okay, this is um, just um, past the intersection of Chesterfield Road and Spring Street in Leeds. Um, just the creation of um, an additional, for let's see, if you see lot two here, 50 feet of frontage, it's an urban residential A. Um, zone. So um, this is an existing single family house and it's just a new residential lot on Chesterfield Road. So do you want me to go through all of them or do yeah. a roll call? Sure, first? that's good. Okay. Okay. Only one roll call. <laughs> so this is Glendale Road. This is part of the um, open space i'm sorry there was a um, cluster development with um, commercial outdoor recreation for the private dog park um, mm -hmm. sort of across from the landfill so this anr is really just creating the lots that were approved previously under a special permit by the planning board so now they're actually going to um, close on the deal for creating these lots so the planning board already approved this layout and you just now have to actually approve the creation of lots based on that layout. So that's that uh, one. I just want to I just want to mention that I uh, am representing the applicant, so my vote at the end of this will not be construed as voting on this ANR. Okay. The other thing you could do is you know individually vote, but that's fine. Um, Holly Street is um, another project that you guys reviewed. Um, this is the church on Holly Street. So um, the main church building is this parcel B. Let me zoom in so you can see. Whoops, I zoomed in too much. Um, this parcel B is the church lot. And, and if you recall, there were um, tw uh, 12 townhouse units along in, from front to back. Um, for this parcel. And so uh, originally they, the applicant, which is O'Connell Development, wasn't sure how they were going to proceed about um, redeveloping this whole church, all these church holdings. But now they'd like to separate the church parcel from the um, residential unit um, so that um, they can create this distinct condo boundaries for those residential unit owners. There's no minimum lot size or frontage required in the central business district, so it really doesn't change your permit um, approval at all. And this really just allows them to create, um, you know, ownership boundaries between the two um, parcels. They're still looking for um, an option for a buyer for the church to reuse the church. And that's the third and final a &R that I have. Great. Somebody have a motion to approve those three a &Rs as described? The motion to approve the three a &R. &R, 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 what? That's Seconded. It. Thank you, Yuri. Seconded by Marissa. And we understand that Alan is voting on the, the first and the third one, and he's abstaining from the second one. Correct. All right, all those in favor, let's start again with Melissa. Yes. Last vote, guys, Sam. Yuri? Yes. Alan? Yes for two out of three. David? Yes. Okay, Melissa? It's not the last vote. We're gonna have to vote again to adjourn, but yes. <laughs> no, we have one more. Yeah, I think there's nothing else. With the minutes. Okay. You no, we did the minutes. We did the minutes. Yeah, yeah. But I have one. I have one last thing. Oh. 
Okay. Okay. It's not here. But no, but please, Carolyn, please tell us. I know you really want to see this. Okay. Um, <laughs> hold on. Let me do my screen share. Okay. So um, this is a request for release of the first right of refusal for the city to purchase land. So um, there is a, th what I'm showing you on the screen here is the far western edge of the city. Um, this road here is um, West Farms Road and then um, Sylvester Road going north. And this is Turkey Hill Road. And do you see my cursor right here? Um, mm -hmm. This cross. Um, that, this is a flag lot that is um, currently has a buyer. Um, this flag lot, and I'm going to zoom in a bit. Um, this flag lot, for some reason, was put into Chapter 61 land, which is a tax, um, ben a beneficial tax status for people who want to um, have recreation or um, agricultural uses on their property and be taxed at a lower level than a development parcel. However, if the um, owner ever wants to take a property and <clears throat> transition it to a developed piece of property, they need to do two things. One is they're required to pay three years of back taxes as though it was a developable parcel. Um, and the other thing is they need to offer a first right of refusal for the city to purchase the land for the purposes of maintaining open space or recreation um, activities, so, um, or agriculture. Um, and so what this, and, and when a request comes in to release a chapter 61 parcel, um, it comes to the city and there's an city department, particularly the planning office, um, has to have a recommendation from the planning board about the release and then the mayor signs a release or says, no, we want to exercise this option to buy this land for open space. Now this flag lot um, was originally created with a permit by the planning board as part of a development, um, limited development project when the Turkey Hill gravel pit, which is what all of this is here and over here, um, uh, came up for an opportunity for the city to settle a bunch of lawsuits and create open space for the city. So as part of this deal, the city already permanently protected um, what had previously been the gravel operation and all the land surrounding it. So this whole parcel here on the south um, is about 36 acres. It's permanently protected as open space. And then all of this is another from that holdings was probably another 30 to 50 acres for that piece. And as part of that development, we carved off a three unit um, townhouse project way down here. I'll zoom in. And um, this flag lot. So the whole intention from the beginning was that there would be two market rate um, properties developed and in return, the city would permanently protect all of this open space. So we had originally intended this to always be a market value, you know, a high end market rate lot. So there's no, and, and a common driveway has already been built up to that parcel. So there's no real reason why we would sort of backtrack and say, no, we want that as open space. So that's why it's staff recommendation to the planning board that this really stay as a high end private uh, market rate lot as opposed to come to open space. So um, I need to vote from the planning board as uh, to relinquish our first right of refusal on this land. So move. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Thanks, Carolyn, for the walk down that Turkey Hill Lane there. Yeah. Those of us who were around when that story was up, there was a contentious time. Um, any other discussion? Okay. And we will go to our second to the last roll call, starting with Melissa. Yes. Yes, Sam. <laughs> yes, Yuri. 
Yes. And Alan. Yep. Yep. And David. Yep. All right, Marissa. Thank you for your explanation, Carolyn. That was very informative. And yes. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Adam. Is there anything else, Carolyn? Oh, George, that's my my last word. Um, I'm moving to East Hampton. So oh. I started my, my condo to the market on Monday, maybe. And uh, my spouse and I were buying another condo down on Route 10. Um, we just went over there to, for the inspection. It's pretty good. Basically, uh, this whole COVID thing, uh, we're both working with the Zoom meetings and um, it's not working that well. Uh, you can handle, but it, you know, in our ages, we think we deserve more than that. Uh, also, that is, this I want to share with you guys, that there is an enchantment um, for both of us toward downtown Northampton. Um, so uh, that's not the main reason, but you know, um, that's part of that. Uh, it's been very neglected. Um, and then for some of you that know that the parking issue on this condo here. Um, so it's a bunch of things, but mainly because uh, we want some more space for ourselves. So uh, it's been a great honor to work with you all, a great experience. And uh, who knows, I'd be in the border down there. You never know. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, and that's my farewell. Uh, and I wish you all well, right? And thank well, you. Yuri, we're going to miss you. Yeah. I hope so. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> we will. And I'm sad that we can't take you for a beer oh, or well, a beverage or whatever you want. <laughs> a date. <laughs> uh, it's true. It could still be arranged, but. Yeah. Don't think movie. of us every time you drive around the roundabout. You'll think, yeah, of oh, wow. <laughs> Look at exactly. That. And if somebody cuts you off turning right, uh, oh, <laughs> that was right. Look at that. <laughs> Thanks. So, well, good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. Sorry to see Bye. you go. <laughs> bye bye. Okay. Well, first we have to adjourn. Don't don't go yet. Oh, let me oh. adjourn the last one. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Second. Yeah. All right. Uh, Melissa. Yes. Yes, Sam. All right, Yuri, last vote. Yep. All right, Alan. Yep. David. By the way, this is lucky. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> I relinquish my vote to lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Look. So then there's um, uh, well, uh, Oh, well. Well, Yuri, I'm sure East Hampton is going to reach out to you. <laughs>